make it real. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Welcome, and thank you for joining us this Saturday evening for our third Weird West session. This is uh, our Learn to Play Fate series. Um, we're going to be playing uh, another session tonight uh, with the with Moira Haskell, John Harrington, the Reverend, uh, C.J. Haggard, and Herbert Peacock Hessenwing. So we're going to have a good time tonight. So, uh, as usual, if you have any questions or anything uh, about anything that's going on, please add it to the live chat. I'm happy to answer questions. I'm going to talk through my thoughts as a GM to make sure that uh, I am sharing that with both the players so that they can get a handle on, on how I'm doing things. And also for you, those people who are uh, viewing this either live or after the session was recorded. So, uh, tonight's session... Uh, whenever we got together last time, uh, the the five of us, you know, we talked about how much fun we're having. And this is a group that's kind of really gelled and we wanted to continue the Weird West. Well, I proposed two more sessions, tonight's session and then a final session that will happen next month in April. So tonight's session, I give it the title of Eastbound. And that is literally the only clue of any sort that I've provided our players tonight. <laughs> Oh man! So, um, I, I I'm still personally... just reeling from the events of last session. I like I know even think about what's happening. <laughs> yeah, next. I'm just like try, just you know I've just been looking out the window, standing on a boat <laughs> on the beach, yeah. just been. Oh yeah, well I mean last session was very intense, very intense, and let's see if we can't <laughs> capture that uh, and have a little bit of fun tonight. Um, my uh, listen, I, I have not promised you happy endings. I just no, promised no, that definitely. Promise, yes. promise, promise that anybody were... here expects it. Yeah. You promised yeah. us <laughs> en yes. endings. Yes. Of, <laughs> of no <laughs> sort. Endings. <laughs> that is that is exactly right. Um, so we've got uh, Essie Matthews in the chat is asking for a recap. I can tell you that um, tonight's session is not a continuation of previous events oh. each one of the weird west sessions that we've been playing has been standalone okay. okay and that's something that um in the last session i didn't make clear uh at the start and so there was a little bit of talk of like how long after that initial train robbery happened um but essie you've uh you've asked a good question what i would like for anyone who might be new uh i would like for everyone to introduce their character uh, and say maybe one of your favorite moments from the, the last couple of sessions. I guess we've only had two. So um, I'm going to go ahead and ask for a volunteer to go first. Well, since um, first and foremost, uh, hi, Essie. Um, glad to see that you've joined us. Um, um, I play John Harrington, who is kind of the smooth talking con artist. And the idea behind his character, he, he kind of played a minor role on the train robbery incident, but he kind of had his moment in the mime, limelight, excuse me, thinking punchline, mimes, um, clowns. And, um, <laughs> but, but seriously, um, I'm thinking um, he kind of had a moment where he confronted the devil with um, the shimmering mask, which was this magical item that was um that was given to him so john has always been kind of this um living life on the edge and trying to get out of the con game but he never seems to be able to fully get out and the last session outside of the train robbery was when he finally managed to stand up to the devil and get rid of the shimmering mask that was kind of his moment where uh, there was uh, a fire in the church and he had consigned the mass to the flames. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, who would like to introduce themselves next? Okay. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so uh, I play Moira Haskell and uh, she is a, a uh, tough lady who's kind of caught between these two worlds. She was uh, married. Her husband, unfortunately, she's from back east. Uh, unfortunately, her husband passed away uh, while they were heading out west to uh, make a homestead. And she very quickly discovered it is extremely hard to make a living for yourself as a woman, as a single woman um, in the in this time. And so she kind of had to turn to a life of crime. And so she's stuck between these two worlds of like, 
you know, um, the proper way that she should be acting in the criminal world. And she's really good at being a criminal, but she like doesn't want to fully go into it. She's like, I've been forced into this because of circumstances, but probably this session, I mean, she's, it's been a speedballing the last two, but probably this session, she's going to be tipped into it. No point of return. If I have my psychic visions, um, accurately, but uh, she um, last session um, was able to use some of her magic ammunition to uh, help consign the devil to hell. Um, and also we met her um, girlfriend who was the sheriff of the town we were in and had a uh, pet lizard named her middle name, Jean. Um, that, was so funny. that was great. Yeah, that whole interaction was great. Um, yeah, and, and it was said during that time that the sheriff keeps mysteriously disappearing. I'm not sure if the sheriff is going to reappear this time or next time, but um, I'm really interested to see what happens with the sheriff at some point in the future. And yes, how, how Moira um, handles uh, being tipped actually into the life of crime. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Josh, you wanted to go next? Yeah, so I'm playing the Reverend C.J. Haggard, who is a gun-toting preacher. Um, he's a good preacher, I think. He takes it pretty seriously. He's pretty clean. Uh, he was given a pair of six guns by the angel Gabriel uh, to help banish evil and right wrongs, and he named them Thoughts and Prayers because it's very funny. Uh, I think my favorite <laughs> highlight moment with him has been when he walked into the, the, the church that he preaches at, Someone told him uh, the money for some orphans had gone missing and he literally dropped everything and stormed out of the church to go figure out what happened because he doesn't. Oh boy. He doesn't cut corners. Don't ask what happened to those orphans. He's still thinking about it. He'll never uh, forget. He'll never be over it. Yeah, the end of that. Oof. that was there was blood. so much blood. There was so much blood. Was, <laughs> and, and fire and a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot to think about. Um, He's probably got some really hard questions that he needs to resolve about himself and the world and what to do next and what to believe, but we'll get there. Awesome. So Zach, that leaves you. Give yeah. us an introduction. All right, yeah, I'm, uh, my character is uh, Peacock. He was uh, orphaned and raised by the, the local madam and now works for her as kind of this clean cut kind of bruiser bouncer and doing odd jobs for her. Um, and... Uh, and there's a couple of them. So she's, he's now like the devil told him in the last one, the devil told him that he knows something about his parents. So he's very intrigued by that, but that, that was immediately followed by him smashing a lantern and burning down the church and, you know, pushing the devil out. So, uh, not sure where that stands with him, but definitely his, uh, he's, his drive is with, you know, now he's preoccupied about, you know, how he, his parents died and all that and why the devil knows anything, but, uh, that's kind of where he's at. Awesome. Thank you all for those introductions. Uh, I am the GM. I make all of your terrible dreams come true. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start with something. So one of the things that I will do occasionally and in, in fate is whenever I'm so we've spent time in the West for the last two sessions. We've spent it in the, the same town, basically the same town, the same area. One of the things that I like to do as a GM sometimes is take the players away from where they commonly are. And whenever I, I do that, what I'll do is I'll have them write an aspect to relate to that change. So for instance, I was running a like college student supernatural game and I wanted to put them into like basically a, a big club where like there was a party going, lots of music. And I wanted every, and because that was going to be a big scene in that session, I asked everyone to write an aspect with how they like relate to clubs or something like that. So for today, for you, since we're headed East, okay, mm -hmm. away from the weird West, mm -hmm. I would like each of you to come up with an aspect for your character that relates them to back East. Okay. So, for instance, like, maybe I'm never going back there. Maybe I'm wanted in Pittsburgh. Maybe I'm, you know, uh, like, never been east. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a haunted kind of thing. But, I mean, that's mm -hmm. really the theme that we generally go for in this game. But it can be anything that works for you. So we're going to go ahead and take a moment. If anyone has any ideas, um, you know, I'm, I'm here to help you work on <clears> them. <throat> So yeah. I, I have an idea just right at the gate and I want to run it. I want to run it by first because it might affect what kind of world this happens in. 
uh, the first aspect that pops into my head is the devil owns the East. This idea of like uh, whatever conflict that's happening out West between the devil and the forces of good or whatever has already been resolved in the East. And okay. he won. And right. you know that what that looks like, it might not be like overtly hellish. It might just be institutional and entrenched and this is how the world is. All um, right. Uh, I'm okay. Go ahead and add that as an, uh, you can label the aspect like East um, and then add that as an aspect uh, reverend. Cool. All right. Who else has an idea that they'd like to talk about? Um, yeah, I thought, I don't, I don't call this or how to frame it, but like the immediate thought I had was in the last session, we had that moment in uh, Charlotte's office with the uh, newspaper clippings saying something coming from the East and that really caught his attention. So something about, you know, where that comes from, or I don't know, it's something about the intrigue involved in that and, and the potential discovery of whatever connected to her. I don't know. You know what? Know that it could be uncovering Charlotte's past. All right. That's good. Mm -hmm. That relates to, to going East because of all of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Moira already has the trouble of wanted by the law, which I'm assuming, you know, is 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 kind of everywhere in, in various places, but also true. primarily in the East. Uh, but for the recap aspect, um, I don't know how to word this, but like, you know, she's from there her family's from there her husband's family's from there it's like she's known by people it's not like she can just be wherever and she's not going to run into people she knows um yeah she's known by people i don't yeah that's all i got <laughs> is that she doesn't want to be known by people but she's known by people Maybe like the um, i'm working on start. it i'm working on it yeah i don't know well, i, I mean, don't know what else i can too. I'm still uh, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's um, thought. Like the I word social light comes to mind, but that is not the right word. Oh, okay. Like yeah, I'm, because social light kind of implies that that was active, and what you really want is um, something passive, or maybe it's like. Uh, maybe one thing that comes to mind is like maybe her husband was kind of a big deal in organized oh, yeah, crime yeah, yeah. on the east and like you're still connected to that even if it is kind of passive yeah oh oh that's a good one that's a good one maybe he had like a an, maybe he had a double life that she had no idea about oh Ooh. interesting okay and in going back to the east they're gonna be like uh, maybe someone will approach her and she's like what are you talking about Oh. Well, my oh. hesitation on that, um, I'm not going to say no, but my hesitation <laughs> or she could just on be that, notorious. <laughs> well, it, it's, I mean, there's that. Yeah. Um, my hesitation on the, like, you know, husband had, like, a, um, you know, was, like, in touch with the mob or something along those lines, is that Moira is already wanted for crime. And so, like, I think that having something that feels more, like, just, um, uh, it could be ran in social circles, yeah you know okay. and so yeah, what that, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and we collectively know that that means that like moira is you know has some renown like you know people in certain places will recognize her okay um, and that will uh complicate things because they don't think of her as a criminal oh they yeah think of her as you know the wife of a very successful you know this man yeah person. yeah you, yeah. you, you have the good place so. you know that's fun the flip side oh, of yeah. that is that opens up potentially opens up doors too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. totally yeah, I'm going to put it down as, as that and like with a little note in the notes section about like she's well known for being the wife of this businessman. Oh, that's really yeah. fun because like maybe you have the reputation of being really well to do and just like the perfect housewife and then you're just rolling with your guns. <laughs> <just> like... <laughs> wearing oh, pants. Oh my God. She's wearing pants. <laughs> that's really you're gonna good. You're going to get kicked out of so many places. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So, uh, so Dylan, uh, how are you doing? So um, I, because I'm Baltimorean, I need to put Baltimore representation into everything. <laughs> um, I, I put in originally my love still lives in Baltimore, but I have an even better idea. Um, 
because I like the idea of like he has like someone that he loves that you know is one of the few people he's been honest with um but i think it should actually relate to the railroad um the b and o railroad Ugh. because um depending on um i'm just thinking where we go that might be a relevant detail um especially given how during this time the railroad was huge um yeah. i don't i know it's probably not like historically accurate i just but still this is weird west who cares yeah um, our fidelity to history is very light yeah but i'm thinking you don't um, remember in the 1880s when satan showed up yeah yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> well um, no, santa we must santa. be re- we must be reading different history books i don't <laughs> but i'm thinking i'm thinking um you know like a girlfriend the only person that john has ever been honest with or one of the few oh, um cool. not the only but one of the few um, works on the railroad, works for the railroad, um, either as a conductor or something like that. I don't know. Um, that's, that was my thought. All right. Sounds good to me. Uh, I like that. You know, um, you could have, I mean, you could either have her, like she works as like an engineer driving trains. You could have her like, do you want her centered in Baltimore or do you want her like on trains? On trains, because okay, depending on where we go, I do think, you know, having her, you know, Mobile mobility, is though. going to be helpful. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that you could do is you could have her be a postal worker. Mm-hmm. Like they they did a lot of oh, you know yeah. they did a lot of traveling. Oh yeah. So like she could like have Pony she could Express have done that. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Well, not necessarily Pony Express, yeah, like, but like, just like yeah. just traveling along, making sure that the mail, like you know the the hooks with the mail bags, you know, making sure that those get like taken in oh, and yeah. everything. So mm-hmm. yeah, it there's an there's, easy there's, easy route for inserting her wherever we may go. Too, so. yeah. yeah yeah that sounds good um as an aside there is a a podcast called side door from the smithsonian that has an episode that is about a dog that rode the railroad back and forth across the united oh, states cool yes cool. it is a fantastic story um about how like all the different towns would put tags on the dog to mark where the dog had been it was a great story mm-hmm. yeah so all right, so everybody has their their out east uh, aspects. Is everyone happy with them? Yeah, I think mine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Could do some good possibilities. Look forward to it. I'm gonna import it again. I just need to make the terrible joke that um, you've heard the crane wife by the Decemberists. Now get ready for the train wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's. I'll blog off now. <laughs> oh, oh well. If being bad like that is caused to be logged <laughs> off, like we might as well just stop streaming. We're oh, I know. Finish it. Um. All right, great. So you guys want to play a game? Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let me mm-hmm. find my notes here. All right. So we've done the out east aspects. So Peacock, um, we are going to open the scene. Uh, the scene is that the sun has barely started rising uh, and starting to come through the windows where in your room where you sleep. Um, there is a, a pounding on your door, uh, like just a, a frenetic pounding on your door. Um, and then a with a swift kick, the door is like thrown open. Um, it knocks the um, it knocks the there's the jug for cleaning in the middle of the night, the um, bowl and the jug of water. Why can't I think of the name of it? Doesn't matter. It breaks Sister? because it gets wash, wash we, basin, wash basin. There we That's go. <laughs> uh, all right. It's like, it's like please don't this. say the chamber pot. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll save Thank the you. poop jokes for later. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so the. Um, The not chamber pot knocks off, smashes to the floor, wakes you up instantly. You like sit up uh, and there is Valentina uh, Ruiz um, and she is like just covered with sweat um, and she is like, uh, she's peacock. Listen, um, Charlotte has been taken by U.S. Marshals and they're getting on the train now Um, or rather uh, they've taken, put her on the train and the train leaves uh, or left eastward 10 minutes ago. Have you seen Uh Moira? Uh, I, I just woke up. I have no idea. I, I haven't seen her since yesterday. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's walk, walk uh, and Valentina let's go. just, uh, yeah, she just, she turns around and goes, she's like, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to head out and I'm going to try. And um, so here's a question. Uh, Zach, who do you yeah. want to go get the Reverend or Harrington? Uh, 
Harrington. Okay, great. Right. Um, so yes. So, um, so you are going to go and get Harrington. Harrington, you've got your typical room above the, um, above the saloon, I imagine. Uh, that seems like a good place for a con man to rent a room. Is that yeah. acceptable? Yep, yep, yep. That would be Excellent. exactly the kind of place you would be. All right, great. Zach, you, um, uh, or I'm sorry, rather Peacock, uh, go wake Harrington up. All right, yeah, I'm pounding on your door, bud. Pound, 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 pound. Ah, too early. Uh, yeah, hang, up, hang over, yeah, hang over. Um, Mo. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Just, just give me one minute, and then, then uh, he, he kind of gets up and he gets dressed real fast because, you know, always has a plan in case everything goes south. But yeah, yeah Charlotte, Charlotte's been snapped, snatched by marshals. We got to get going. What? I don't, I don't know idea what's happening, but she's gone. Marshals are taken here. We have to go. Okay, let's go. And right, we just guys. bolt off. Yeah. All right, you jet. Um, so, Reverend, um, you, um, in this instance, you've gotten up early this morning, like before mm-hmm. the sun rises. I mean, yeah. you're, you're a preacher, you're wholesome. I imagine you go to bed by seven o'clock. Um, mm-hmm. Excuse me. Uh, so you're, you're up and ready kind of for the day uh, whenever there's a frenetic knock uh, on, the, on the door of, of your room. <clears throat> I, uh, I put down my unseasoned whole brand that I've been eating for breakfast. Uh, Kellogg brand. Haggard, and... you in there? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I opened the door. Uh, Haggard, have you seen Moira? No. Fuck. Uh, um, uh, I wince at his language. Her language. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I wince at her is, language. She is a, yes, she is a, a um, I think we said she was of Mexican descent, yeah. I believe. I, I just, yeah. I just, I mixed yeah. up and uh, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was Zach knocking on the door. So, no worries. Um, yeah. yeah, listen. Um, fuck. Uh, sorry, my apologies. Uh, damn it. Oh, apologies again. It's better. Um, it's better. That was uh, the Bible. Madam, Madam Charlotte has been taken by U.S. Marshals, and the train left ten minutes ago. I've already woken up Peacock, um, and he's gone to get Haggerty. Uh, I'm going to go and find Moira, and she kind of like turned it around and bolts. Um, I I run after her and try to catch her arm. Sure, you managed to, to catch her arm. What? Look, I want to help. Okay, good. Where? Go get a horse. Where? Okay, let's 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 go get a horse. You're not going to get anywhere fast on foot. Um, she's got a horse right outside of the. Oh, right okay. Then I let her jump on her yeah. horse. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, no. She's the sheriff. She's she's got a horse. Okay. Um, and she kind of rides off. So Amelia, we've got a, a I've got a question for Moira. Yes. Because I think I think Moira would like to have a compel. Um, oh. Okay. Uh, and I would like Moira, I, I would like to compel Moira uh, on Wanted by the Law. So I'm offering you a fake point on Wanted by the Law that mm-hmm. these U.S. Marshals that snatched Madam Charlotte also snatched you as well. I'm taking it. I'm Ooh, taking yeah. it. Yes. All right. I love okay. this. Oh, oops. I actually spent a fate point rather than giving myself one. <laughs> no. Oh, speaking of which, uh, um, should oh, yeah. we be okay, starting nice. at our refreshes? Because I'm currently at five. Yeah, and I'm sitting at yeah. one. Yeah, everybody, let's see. So I, should have, I should, should have, have four, four now. Yes. Right. I think I should have two, probably. All right. Yeah, so let's see. Herbert, your refresh is two. Yeah, I added Reverend, a yeah. your My refresh, refresh is, is also two. two. All right, then let me deduct your fake points. Uh, Mr. Harrington, your refresh is three, so you're good. And Moira, your refresh is three. Um, so you are good because I gave you an additional fake point. And yeah. I actually should have four fake points as well. So oh, yeah. I have oh. a question for, for Amelia. Mm-hmm. So would like would Moira um like is she somebody who is like has regular habits? Like it just is like if we found, like if we went to your place where you'd stay and you weren't there, would that be alarming to us, or would that would we like not know where to look? Basically, um, I would say probably you wouldn't know where to look, and that's all. That's probably why um the sheriff is so like, oh God, where could she be? Mm. Is because she, out of anyone, would know what she is doing, but she knows that Moira is kind of like an unpredictable person. Okay. So she's then just like, right. oh, oh crap! Like I'm trying to find any idea of where she could have been because if anything probably predict she would have been predictable in the fact that she probably goes to the like drink every night and that's about the only activity she reliably 
<laughs> oh, my God. Is that? Yeah. All right. So, uh, Harrington and Haggard and Hessenwing. Lots of H's. Oh, my God. All of your last oh names with H. I didn't see that uh -huh. before. That's nuts. Oh, Every, oh, my God. H squad. H -squad. H -squad. All right. <laughs> All right. The four, the four horsemen and women of. Oh, Haggard. yeah. Maybe. Maybe the H stands for hell. Mm. So, um, all right. So, John, Reverend, and, and Peacock, um, the the three of you have gathered together. Valentina has has ridden off to try and find out where Moira is. Um, you're presuming by the fact that she's upset that Moira is not where, like, not in her room or anywhere that's, like, regularly known. You may make different assumptions if you want to, but you do know that the train left 10 minutes ago um, whenever... Uh, Peacock was first noticed or first notified. So that means like uh, you're behind on some time. Yeah. Um, I don't so know I'm what, not sure what you do. would like to do. Yeah, I don't know what everyone uh, else wants to do, but I know I think Peacock, you know, it being Charlotte, I think regardless of whether we're, you know, he's concerned about Moira, but I think he'd be, you know, hoofing it to the train. Like at when's, a, yeah, for Charlotte. when's the next train leaving? Uh, the next train is probably leaving in another hour or two. So if you wanted to, you could catch a train to head that way. Um, yeah. So that's an option. Uh, you also know from the very first adventure that we had together that you can probably cut them off at the pass. If yeah, you I don't think I'd be waiting so, for another train. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or, yeah I doubt yeah, Peacock is going to be very patient. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> So oh, I don't know. Yeah, you guys want to do it? Like, I mean, I don't know if somebody should be sent off for Valentina, or, or you know, to catch up to her or not, and ask her something, or if we should, or, or what. But uh, who, kind of... who among us can probably ride the fastest? If if anyone could, it'd probably be John because um, actually, let me see. What's my what's my ride at? I guess the the only the only reason I say that is because it, you know John is most likely used to you know taking off when you know yeah oops it turns out that the the rubes are on to me now so um let's see here if he's got anything that works for that um i guess we could use past time i cashed out which would be i could invoke that well, before we start thinking about invoking, oh, like, yeah. what's the, like, I, I'm just trying to get a general, like, plan of action. I yeah. can definitely put it together and start putting together a framework for you guys to resolve it. But, like, I just want to yeah. know what the three of you are doing. Like, are Is you anybody to trying to get down to or no? Um, my, I was thinking that whoever can ride the fastest might want to grab Valentina and bring her with us while the, the other two just try to head off a train of the pass. The only one that has any any ride skill is the Reverend. Mm. <laughs> so he is he's mm. a ride of All one. Right. So yeah, I don't know why I didn't invest in that. <laughs> Moira's got a, a ride of one. I mean it's called drive, but you know. Yeah. But yeah, she is also unavailable. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Well, you're on the you're 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 well taken care of, so you're good. Oh yeah, mm. oh yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. That burglary three is gonna come in handy. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, since I mean, I guess I guess it would make the most sense already narratively. So if if mechanically the Rev has 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 drive and we and we don't, and I'm already with uh with John and Valentina so did tell to, him to go get a horse. So. Yeah, so it seems to make sense for me and me and John to be chasing yeah. the train and 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 Rev to go get Valentina. And I I think I'm probably also concerned about Valentina. She seems like she's like very uh her behavior seems kind of erratic and I'm afraid that she might do something a little wild. And, and I feel pretty confident about my ability to calm her down and help her like focus. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. All right. So Peacock and um, Harrington are racing off, trying to, to cut off the train uh, while uh, the Reverend is going to attempt to uh, contact Valentina. All right, great. Um, we'll resolve Valentina, and then we'll do the the chase against the train. And then Amelia, we will eventually get to you. Oh, I um, figured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. That's, um, I'm here for it. <laughs> okay, great. Whatever happens. Uh, all right. So, um, so Reverend, you, um, you know, you begin uh, kind of like riding wildly around town. It's not a big town, mm. so it doesn't take long. Yeah. Um, but you find that Valentina's Valentina's horse is outside of the the sheriff's building. 
So outside of the, you know, the office there, which is also the jail and pretty much everything. Yeah. So, yes. Um, uh, and you find. Yeah, I'm gonna and, hop off and knock. And yeah, walk in. Um. As you walk in, you find that she's uh, kind of like sniffles. She immediately pushes her hands up to her eyes. Um, she's got a paper in her hand. Um, and you can tell that she's trying to cover from uh, having like an emotional moment. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just like, well, I, I, but what are you doing here? I figured you'd, you'd be out trying to, to save Madame Charlotte. She's the heart and soul of this town. Our friends have taken off after the train. We believe she was likely on it. Well, considering that that I've got, and she points to another sheet of paper on her desk, she's like, "I've got the the warrant for arrest, her arrest, right here from the U.S. Marshals." Um, so I can tell you that everything was done official. So unfortunately, she's you know, um, <laughs> she's under arrest for murder. So there wasn't anything that I could do to to help her, and I was not told by. Um, by Marshall, by the that Zenner fellow, that uh, that he was also going to uh, pull in another bounty, and she slaps mm -hmm. the paper that she's got in her hand on the desk. Uh, what's on it? Uh, you see a um, a long list of crimes, uh, and you see Moira Haskell's name uh, on the on the paper, um, and you see that the U.S. Marshals have also gotten Moira as well. I take a moment to think my hand on my chin. And I ask uh, Valentina, what do you suppose we ought to do? Well, what is it there that, that we can do? They're US Marshals. I can't go and go against the US Marshal system. If I do that, you know, I'm gonna lose my job. I'm gonna lose my pension. Uh, you know, the, the West is hard enough for a woman that like, I can't even believe that I've managed to become sheriff of this town. So, you know, what am I gonna do? Turn to a life of crime? I, I have no interest in turning to a life of crime. Well, prostitution, that's also not anything that I want to do either. So I have to, she kind of slumps down in her chair and she says, I, I have to protect me and there's not much to be done. Well, I can tell you from experience that we've got some unofficial friends chasing that train down. And I know you have a lot to lose if you walk away from all this. Sorry, I know you have a lot to lose if you run down Mara right now, but I think you have a lot to lose if you don't. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Okay, so out of character uh, and no, basically, no, no, no. oh, She's, oh, yeah, no, no, no. She, oh, she oh. knows what you're talking. Oh, about. oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, 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 it's just okay, like, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if she's worried enough about people judging her for being a woman in her position, can yeah. you imagine how people would judge like les lesbians? Yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so I'm, um, excuse me, I'm, I'm gonna have to say that I have to, to sit this one out. There's lots of there's lots of crazy things that have happened in this town, and I've I've helped with what I can, but um, I think that the best thing that you and your friends could do is uh, make sure to see if there's anything you can do for Madame Charlotte. She's the heart and soul of this town. Well, I think we've got a lot of reasons to chase this train down, but if you don't wish to follow us, I understand. I'll do my best. If wishes were horses, I would take a stampede after that train. <laughs> but they're not. He's, day, he Reverend. says something really cute about how his horse's name is Wish and walks away. <laughs> 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 that's actually that's canon now. He he did name his horse Wish. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. That's great. Uh -huh. <laughs> come on, come on, Wish. Let's go catch a train. Nay. Oh. <laughs> uh all right so let's go back to um harrington and peacock uh you guys are racing as hard as you can on horseback um you are trying to the the way that this train setup is this isn't exactly the same stretch of train that you had had before so we're not we're doing a callback for racing a train but we're not doing the same callback uh, you know that if you cross over the prairie that you'll be able to, to get to the next town first, potentially. Like it's one of those things that like you think you can, um, 
And so you're, you're pushing hard. No one's actually raced the train here before. Um, and so the, the, next, uh, the next small town, which is even smaller than your town, is called Low Town. Okay. Uh, and so you are trying to get to low town before the train. Um, so in this instance, I'm going to ask for an overcome roll from Peacock. Um, I, I presume that Peacock, you're leading this trying to, yeah. to get to Miss Charlotte, um, since you've got like a vested interest in her personal safety. Yep. Is that true? Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Um, Limbo? so, uh, it is going to be um, uh, an overcome roll, but first, I'm going to be an evil GM, and I'm going to offer you a fake point. Okay. Uh, I'm going to offer you a fake point on Madame Charlotte's flashy confidant and bouncer. Like that's the connection that you have, that solid connection with Madame Charlotte. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to do that and tell you that your horse throws a shoe while you were pushing it too hard, and so you're not going to catch the train. Uh, by the time it gets to low town. Now, yeah. Harrington might be able to, but you're not going to. Okay. Now, the question is whether or not you want that fate point or not. Man. Yeah, because my, my general inclination is to just take compels because I like the whole just making it complicated. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but like, I also, then I'm thinking, oh, God, what are we going to do? Just are we going to be like in three different positions here? Like, are we going to be totally separated? Um, I'm just thinking kind of on that meta level. Um, mm hmm. Uh, which is, and which to I, be fair, isn't a meta level at all. That's like really what's happening. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, damn. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think. Um, yeah, I think I'd like to. I think I. I want to refuse the compel. Yeah, actually. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and spend the fate point to refuse right. the compel. Um, so you know, um, Dang, one of the so one of the things that that I <laughs> do with fate points, and this is. Um, not precisely canon whenever you pay off a compel mm -hmm. um, because I'm, you know, one of the things that I've decided to do with this session is compel harder. Uh, and so when you spend that fate point, I don't want you to just have it be a net loss of a fate point because that's not really as interesting as it could be. And so okay. what that's going to mean is that, so Herbert on that high concept that you have, uh, I'm going to add a free invoke to that. Okay, so you basically pre-spent um, and invoke, invoke on that. Let's see, free invoke track. There we go. Um, so what that means is instead of having a flexible fate point that you can spend anywhere, mm -hmm. you have one free invoke on Madame Charlotte's flashy confidant and bouncer that okay. you can spend because that was kind of the aspect that I, I called upon and that's how yeah. you refused it. Okay. So does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. I feel that that's a little bit more fair, especially if I'm going to do like really hard compels. Yeah. It makes I it like a sure. net minus one instead of a net minus two, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, and it also limits, it limits your options because spending oh, a big yeah, point yeah. could power a stunt. It could power literally any aspect on the board. Um, so, constricting it to one aspect I feel is, is a decent trade-off. Um, so, all right. So, yeah, so you've decided that um, your horse is not going to, th you've decided, you paid sure. and your horse is not going to throw a I've shoe. I willed my horse to not throw that. <laughs> <laughs> Ish. Uh, and so what I'd like you to do is make an overcome roll. This is going to be a, um, a ride check and I'm going to set the difficulty for this at four. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. It is a difficult ride check. I yeah. think we established that there are many reasons for that. Yeah. And... Almost none of you took ride, and that's okay. This yeah. happens sometimes. And it's I should a just left so you can... plus ones blank for this opportunity. Well, there's that. Um, yeah. There's also the fact that this is an overcome roll, so you can choose to succeed at a cost, as long as we come up with a good enough cost. Oh, so gotcha. the reality is, is that you can be like, no, we're really going to catch up. We're going to get to Lowtown um, in time for the train, but eh, okay. who knows what's going to happen. All right, let's do it. All right, it. give it a roll. Oh, okay. I like it. Um, you get a plus one because Harrington is helping you. Okay. Okay. This is I presume. Before, so. I, I'm sorry, Dylan. I presume Harrington is helping. Yeah. So, so now I'm choosing okay. the. Okay. No, it's, I didn't say this was different than before. Okay. All right. So you are two points away from a tie. That's what. The, um, was that including the plus one? Because I just. Uh, that was. Just, you got on the dice. You got plus two. You yeah. didn't roll the skill. So that oh, makes it a three. three. Okay. Um, so you got a three. So you could potentially spend a fate point to um, to succeed. 
Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I'm doubling down on him just really gunning it for this. And then then you're going to have to, I guess you'll you know hit me hard with some impels that I can't refuse shortly. Well, I'm going to be adding an, an aspect. Um, you know, trains are fast to the board um, because trains are indeed fast. Uh, and I'm spending one of my GM fate points to uh, make that difficulty go up again. Okay. So racing against the train is going to be, is, has, um, you got a five over a four difficulty. The difficulty is now six yeah. because trains are fast. Gotcha. Um, so, so what's succeeding at a cost now look like? Um, okay. Well, first of all, you can spend another fake point if you want to. Didn't um, I just spend well, one? Oh, I only had one. You only, oh, you only have, oh shit. That's right. You or two, or can I, oh, actually the flip side of that, can I use that, the free invoke because it's yes. about Charlotte? Okay. Yeah. Then I need that. Yeah. They need that then. Then in that case, um, I'll just leave that at zero. Then I'll say I invoked that and then spent this one. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, uh, although I feel like I'm kind of derailing where you're trying to push me. <laughs> No, not at all. What I'm trying okay. to do is is make it difficult. Um, you guys have been playing very well, and so tonight's game, I'm trying to, oh, to push a little bit, push a little mm. bit harder. I love um, it. If you're not having fun, just flag and let me know. Um, I'm having fun. You know, I don't. Okay, I just want to to do that. I've removed the the your aspect from the public board because it's right. no longer needed to be there because you spent the free invoke, but you succeeded because I'm done spending uh, fate points on that particular exchange. So uh, the reason that I spent those fake points was to make the, like getting to the train more of a challenge. So yeah. um, because this is a learning to play fake game, um, I set the difficulty at four because that was pretty high. Your skills for ride were low. That made it less likely that you were going to succeed. Um, you spent a fake point. I counter spent a fake point um, with good reason. And so yeah. it made the scene a little bit more interesting as opposed to going to using a contest or a challenge. Yeah. So no, it's very fitting because I mean, because even when he first established it, I was like, oh my God, how are we going to catch up to a train that's 10 minutes ahead of us already? So, yeah. so no, that was very fitting that they framed it that way. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, you have, uh, the two of you have managed to, um, to get to Low Town um, literally like three minutes before the train is going to be pulling into the station. Um, and we are going to, um, uh, we're going to stop right there with you two. And we're going to go to Moira. Ooh. Hi. Okay. Right. Uh, so right. Moira, let's see. I need to. Uh, all right. So, um, so I'm looking at one of my NPCs. Uh, so Moira, uh, the way that you were caught, um, you basically, like you said earlier today, you uh, drink the nights away and have a good time. And uh, you drank the night away. You didn't recognize that there were some marshals kind of like, you know, ha that had recognized you. And they didn't look like U.S. marshals. I mean, if they did, that would make their job a whole lot harder. Yeah. Um, but um, what we see uh, as the camera or as the audience is Moira kind of heading up the steps of the saloon to her room. And we see a, a one-eyed marshal talking to a couple of other marshals. Uh, then we kind of cut to the next morning and uh, Moira's room, like the, the door is being opened by the proprietor of the saloon. Um, this is not Madame Charlotte's saloon. Um, and uh, in come the, the U.S. Marshals. They basically throw a like an onion bag over your head um, and they wrestle you and they manage to get you into cuffs. Um, before they put the, the onion bag on your head, you do recognize the, the one-eyed marshal. Um, and you know that you're up Ship Creek because this one-eyed marshal, his name is Zenner Jackson. Um, oh, and, wow. And Zenner Jackson um, is, uh, he's got a big hate on for you because you are the one who took out his eye. Oh, this is good. I yes. like this. So, um, so he has, it's, it's kind of personal with you. So, so right now, Moira, um, you've been uh, ethered, and so you're you're fairly like unconscious, uh. Uh, and the uh, you and Madame Charlotte are indeed on a train. You're very like groggy. You still have a bag over your head, and you're handcuffed, so there's not much uh, not much going on there. But uh, you do. 
Um, uh, yeah, you don't, you feel that you're on a train because it's slowing down, like pulling into mm -hmm. a station. Uh, and that's, and the sounds. Yeah. Yes. And well, I mean, trains are loud. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, could she use her burglary to try and break these cuffs? Uh, yes, you absolutely could. All right. Do I just click it? Uh, the skill? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I got plus two. All right. I needed to determine the difficulty. That is an overcome. Uh, I'm going to say that you've got, well, you wouldn't be able to see them behind your back anyway. So I mean, the bag over your head doesn't really impact that. Um, uh, and, uh, given that you, you are a criminal, uh, I'm going to set the difficulty for this at a three, especially since you're groggy from being ethered. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, well, that makes sense. And, yeah. So she, and just, just so you know, that's the, that's the difficulty I would give it. Not like I did that after seeing your role. Yeah. No, that's so. no, that I okay. figured that. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's not easy to get out of handcuffs and she's yeah. like ethered yeah. and everything. So that, yeah. So like yeah. she probably fiddles around with it and kind of like cusses on her breath and is trying to just trying to break and then eventually like her wrists like rubbed raw and everything she just gives up and slumps against the side. Like, well, you can choose to spend a fate point. You can choose to succeed uh, at a cost, or you could decide that you just give up. She's just going to give up for now because she's she's with it enough to realize that she's really messed up right now and out of it. And even if she broke out, like, what is she going to do? <laughs> she's dropped. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Um, so the train comes to a stop and we are back with um, uh, Peacock and Harrington. Uh, so what are the two of you going to do? I've talked a lot already. Dylan, what are you, what are you thinking? Well, I, I think the best approach is for us to knock out a couple of the people, folks on the train and disguise ourselves as them. And we just go in and we break out Moira. Oh <laughs> Quick, yes. Zach, take your eye out. <laughs> I, I dig it. Herbert. Like it, yeah. Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. I mean, yeah, beating out people online is kind of what Peacock does. So I'm good with yes! that. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Alrighty, so that will be. Well, who is who's who's doing this action? Well, who's gonna who's who's trying to steal the clothes so that you guys can do this disguise? Uh, are, we, where are, we, are we like standing on a train platform? I mean, what's going like? Yeah, there's a train the platform. There's plenty of people like here. There is like an inside waiting area too for when the when the weather isn't quite so good. Mm. Um, you know, so. I mean, there is a place where you could try and like, you know, accost two people and steal um, clothes. Uh, there are many ways you can go about it. Um, the question is whether or not you want to, like, I don't want to tell you all the different ways because I want you to do that. But like, how, who is doing it? How now, are you approaching it? Yeah, so Dylan, was, was you're thinking like trying, trying to take out the marshals? Is that what you're saying? Or just like? No, because like the, the marshals are going to, are going to be a little bit obvious. I was thinking of more like, um, I mean, do you think we're going to be recognized? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, and, um, I mean, is there, do we have a reason to think that we're going to be like recognized by these folks? I mean, is there a need to disguise at this point, I guess? Hmm. I mean, and risk, the, like risk the kind of, uh, getting in further trouble by taking somebody out. Hmm. I, mean, we'll say, I will say if it's a prisoner transport train, it's going to be suspicious that anyone is hanging around it because like, you know, what business do you have there? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, what else like, is going on the train? Yeah. So this, That's this, a train, good point. Yeah. this train has a variety of train cars. So mm -hmm. um, in fact, the platform that you're on is the passenger train platforms. Um, you do see like, you know, further back on the train, there are like, there are some cargo train, like cargo, um, cargo cars. Uh, and then there also is like another like passenger car past the cargo cars. Um, so, you know, it seems yeah. that like if they're going to transport crim like transport criminals, they're probably going to do it in that passenger car that's back there, which it, you don't have access to from the passenger cars that you're going to be getting in now. But at least you'll be on the train. Well, mm -hmm. what I'm thinking is, is it's just because because John's high skill is deceive. So I think whatever mode we could do, 
um, we just got to lie our way on there. The other thing I just was thinking uh, is, uh, you know, potentially, maybe this is too risky too, especially if there's any way we have of any getting any idea, maybe where, uh, what train, what kind what train cars, what train car is kind of hiding somewhere and kind of jumping on the outside. One of us jumping on the outside of the train. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm like, kind of get a crack in somewhere, you know? Uh, so, you know, cause I imagine like the car, whatever car Charlotte's on is going to be, and, and Moira's on is going to be, you know, guarded on the inside. Um, have it, but that would give kind of a, an element of surprise to come from the outside, but maybe that's just freaking stupid. I don't know. <laughs> or finding someone to in- interrogate because they're clear, there's someone who knows what's on those trains. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, maybe your idea is better, Dylan. <laughs> what about, what about creating a distraction? Um, to what end? Well, I'm thinking like we could get the marshal's attention um, and direct it away from Moira. Yeah, I guess it'd be yeah something that would have that would it would be something it would be need to be something that would catch a law enforcement's attention attention. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I it'd did be. happen to bring along the same uh, straw dummy that I used in the very <laughs> first. The Just very threw it on the back one. of the horse. <laughs> yeah. If it, it ain't broke, don't fix it. To be in the carpool. <laughs> I, I, I was like, yeah, John was like, I was planning on using this on, on the train as we were going because it, I get a lot of mileage out of it, but we could just throw him <laughs> off to the side and the and if it's convincing enough, the sheriffs, uh, sorry, the marshals would come and get it. So yeah, that'd be another one. Oh, you mean like once the train's going moving? No, it could, like, it could actually go now. We could say it's an escape convict. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then what? And then what? <laughs> and, then, and then when they're distracted, we go in and we we get Moira out. Okay. I mean, you could try that. Yeah, I th- I'm 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 kind of at the point where I'm like, let's just jump into something. So I yeah. let's go for it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it it is the the ever useful. So I think you should do that. I should hang back in case it goes it shit goes sideways, <laughs> and to go to get in another way. Like I mean, if you're like, oh kind of like you said, you said being, I want to know. I mean, I mean like physically be separate, like not be together, like go yeah. both on the train. But I was gonna say That's the more this. you you probably the three of you talk out loud about yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these two dudes in the street. One of them's got a tummy. Yeah. Like yeah. all right, hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So go ahead. Let's proceed. What? Yeah. Alrighty. Um, so what's the plan, Dylan? I'm, what's I'm what's Harrington's sure. plan? So he's what he's gonna do is he's gonna like what he's gonna do is he's gonna try and get to like the side of the train and drop, or like he might even like climb on top of the train on the roof and then just drop the dummy, and you know it'll make that sound and the marshals will. In fact, he'll probably like disguise his voice and say, you know, like say, "Finally free at last," you know. Try, oh, try and, you're uh, using the dummy I to gotcha. fake an escape. I see. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I got oh, this okay. picture better. That now. actually makes that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. That is okay. So I just want <laughs> I just want to make sure that I understand the scene. We've got a train platform that does have a building. Okay, uh-huh. we've got open like prairie land with train tracks. <laughs> There's the passenger trains that are in front of you, like at the like. Yeah. right at the platform there are cargo trains beyond that and then beyond the cargo trains at the tail of the train there is the passenger car that you presume has has criminals mm-hmm. okay so if you want to try and draw the marshal out you're going to have to like walk along the train tracks out the prairie yeah so maybe to, that's to that. that. That's is there a so, possibility i could get on top of one of the train cars and walk down that's what i'm thinking uh, yeah, tunk, tunk, tunk. I mean, there's a possibility of you doing any of this stuff. I'm just saying that, like, so if you're climbing on top of the train cars, the further away you get, the more likely you will be to get seen. Oh. But that's what stealth is for. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm just going to just quick back because I do want to get this. I do want to proceed here because I don't want to hang on this too long. But if if that's the case, uh, Randy, they, like that we have a reason to believe that the, the one in the back is prisoner one. Then I think the guy's going to go back to the original. I mean, and, and obviously we don't know until we actually do it. But if, if if there's an inclination that he has to think that, then I think his inclination is to try to like sneak from the outside because I think he's going to think that it's going to be a tougher job, kind of working their way back through the train. So I think uh, he would be inclined to just you know be hasty and jump in action and try to get on the back of that thing to sneak in. All right. So um. So 
so at this point, before you guys kind of break to to kind of like do your plans, um, a a sweat covered like ridden hard Reverend shows up. Um, uh, so Josh Reverend uh, Haggard is there, and you've bought a train ticket uh, to get on board the train. You know, like a reasonable person. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I say, oh, uh, what's what's with the straw man? Oh, this. <laughs> Oh, this old thing? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's uh, it's Skippy. He comes in handy. Yeah. Okay. This is what yeah. this is what happens when you give gamers a problem. They don't think to buy a ticket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I've been well, I've been I'm enjoying been on the train now. So I, uh, if y'all want to catch us, the ticket booth is that way. I don't know. <laughs> Let's just get on the damn train. Let's just get on the damn train and see what we see and go from there. Oh my god, I, this is I, great. I wanted, to, I, I wanted to give you a chance to do some stuff, but like your your plans um were very interesting. <laughs> and the river walks away so thinking to himself, man, when all you got are hammers, every every problem looks yeah, like a Yeah, so, so John, John is like holding this this dummy and he's like, <laughs> Well <laughs> uh, the, the the ticket attendant's gonna be like, is that gonna sit in a seat? You'll need another ticket. Oh sure, sure, I'll take two. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, <laughs> No, this will this will be great. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, let's. No, how good. about how about this? this we good. can create we can create an aspect straw dummy like, and that can be invoked later. Or you can look like a crazy person, which could be invoked later. I mean, helpfully. <laughs> Both of them are fine. That's definitely yeah. part that's, of it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah. I just I'm just gonna say it's a scarecrow. Yeah, let's just get on the train. Yeah, the scarecrow. Let let it never be said that the reverend's judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've added the aspect straw dummy. It has no free invokes because no, no one created yeah. advantage with nah, it. Don't, don't and, see it. And I think I want to use it too. Oh yeah, that'll be <laughs> yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. what could what could go wrong? It's flammable. Right? Everything. Yes. Oh, right. Uh, oh no. I mean, you know, ultimately, this the the, um, the scarecrow catching fire is why the uh, Wicked Witch of the West got melted. First thought. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So you never know. Might come in handy. All right. So. Uh, so now everybody is aboard the train, um, and the train is pulling away from the station. Um, you guys have all been, you know, uh, you all have like seats that you can sit in if you want to, to make like a plan or something all four of us. like, yeah, well, basically like I'm imagining that it's going to be like, there are seats facing forward and seats facing backwards, you know, with, um, mm -hmm. you know, that way, like four people can kind of sit and face each other and chat, like, because trains will go both directions on tracks. Um, so trust me, I, I rode on a train that went backwards from Philadelphia to New York City. That was not pleasant. I get motion sick easy. Anyway, it's not about me. So you're on the train. Uh, the three of you are together. All right. So, is Mora on this train? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a great what? question, though. That's great. I just bought a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I just her, wanted to get the hell out of here after last her, time. Her girlfriend was very distraught. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, Rev. Yeah. Re, can we, yeah. Rev. What did you find out from from Valentina? Oh, uh, seems like Mara's got a lot of money on her head. And she's done a lot right. of things the law would not approve of. Sounds about right. <laughs> or or the law says she did a lot of things. Well, yeah. This is man's law we're talking about. It is it is a mixed bag. <laughs> well, either, either way, we need we need to find them both. So what's what are we gonna do here? Um, I gotta. Well, I, I saw what appeared to be a prison car, and. Perhaps I could speak to some of these fine people. I am dressed for clerical business. And I, I could find some information and relay it back to you. All right, let's get on that then. I'm feeling very impatient, so I hope you find out something quickly. Yep. Um, has the train started moving yet? Oh, it has, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, we're, yes. we're, we're, we're moving, okay. Yeah. Yes. So, All right, so yeah, I, I hop up and I, uh, I I just start walking slowly backward along the train towards the prison car, kind of like nodding and and blessing period people periodically as I walk by. 
Okay. Um, so you get to the end of the passenger cars and you find that the, the last passenger car is locked because that starts um, the, the cargo, like the, uh, the cargo cars. Mm -hmm. So as a result, it's like blocked off for passengers because there's no reason for passengers to do that. So mm -hmm. mm. is there anyone guarding it? No, there's no one guarding it. Okay. Um, is there any indication of what this immediate cargo car is? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Actually, you okay. know what? I take that back. Yeah. Let, cause me, it... let me open up, I, you know, because I have notes from my last session where I super over-prepared. <laughs> um, so let's let's bring some of that forward, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, oh, no, see. that's bad. Uh, Awful. Uh, yes, the um, the cargo lines are Meltwater Express Coach Line. Um, it is uh, they are cargo cars for the Meltwater Express, um, and you see, you know, kind of in smaller print underneath it, like you know, recently purchased by Grand Fortune Bank Corporation. Hmm. So, okay. would I know anything about either of those two businesses? Well, the last, uh, the last session, the, that was the bank that was uh, that was gonna hire us to to rob. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The Grand Fortune Bank Corporation was going to hire you to um, check the security of the Meltwater Express Coach line, but uh, instead there were dead orphans. So yeah, it, it didn't end up working out. Mm -hmm. hmm. All, All right. right. Well, if there's no obvious indication of what. Because I, I, my, my reasoning is, if, if I know what's in that uh, this first cargo train, I, it'd be easier to make up a reason why someone could let me in, and that could help. But if not, I'll just I'll just make my way back to uh, Harrington and Herbert. Just quick logistical question, because it could make a big difference in terms of how we proceed with the cargo cars. Is it something that's like a box car that you only get in from kind of the side, or is it something you can like walk through? You could walk through as long as like the doors were unlocked. Right. Okay. All right. Um, so, but it is like it's locked at this point. Yeah. Um. So, uh. So, Peacock, I would like to offer you a fate point. Uh, right. I'm going to. Or sorry. I'm going to offer you a compel on straw dummy. Um. As a result <laughs> of you having to. Boy. Sit next oh, to this. No to sit next to the straw dummy and hold it and all of the hay and dust. Um, oh you're basically just like sneezing up a storm and oh, you're going man. to be like sneezing for like, uh, you oh, know, no. this entire scene. We awesome. Can, maybe we can use this. Way to be like, uh, super yeah. stealthy sneezing. Yeah. yeah. So okay. um, all right. you can't pay that off. So nope. I will go ahead and add that. Hey. So, so that makes me think that maybe we could fake a, med a medical emergency. Does it? Um, yeah. All right. Does it? Get to the cargo car with all the medical equipment. I don't know. The about defibrillator. That. Defibrillator's on there. My friend right. has. My friend is dying of allergies, and we need to go to the cargo <laughs> car. That has it's all the, the only way we can save him. You know. Is by oh you letting God. our friend out of prison. <laughs> Sneezing. He's all a right. doctor. I'll buy it. Okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna stop right here for a moment, and we're gonna go to Moira. Um, so okay. she's in a, a separate yeah. place. So so Moira, you're you continue to like have foggy brain from the ether and whatnot, um, but you get a, a stiff kick in the knee um, from whoever's sitting across from you, and they say, "I know you're awake." Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm awake, but I'm not entirely here either. Well, that's okay. I I don't anticipate letting you get your balance back. I uh, remember what happened last time. You had full. Uh, <laughs> you were you had your full faculties. So this voice is the voice of Zenner Jackson. I'm assuming. Uh, you do recognize that voice, yes. Okay. Ooh. Oh God. Okay. So yeah, she recognizes this voice, and it's just like, ah, oh, shit, because she thought maybe it was you know another prisoner talking to her at first but then you know as, she, as he keeps talking she's like oh fuck it's this guy um so she, yeah i mean you know as well as i do it was, it was an accident and you're you're just gonna blame me no matter what i say so uh, uh yeah well i don't think that it was an accident it was quite on purpose 
let's go through the let's go through the story one more time, shall we? And at this point, I'm going to call on the other players to help invent the story for how yes. uh, how Moira Ooh. took out Zenner's eye. Yeah. So, um, so first we have to set the scene. We know that Zenner is a U.S. Marshal and probably hunting Moira because she's a criminal. Mm -hmm. So I would like one of you to set the scene. So if anyone's feeling that, shout out. Otherwise, I'll just call on someone. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say... Uh... I see she's she's breaking into somebody's house. And she's uh, trying to crack a safe. Ooh, crack a safe. Um, so whose safe would this be, uh, Zach? Oh gosh. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a person's name. It can just be yeah. like a judge. It could be like okay, you know, something like um, that. I'd say uh, I'd say maybe it's some other town or something. Maybe it's in a in a jewelry store. Jewelry store. All right. Sounds good. I'm going to add a twist to this in that the jewelry store um, is going to actually be owned by um, Moira's sister-in-law. Nice. <laughs> so, um, cool. yeah, so this is a, a good little twist. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think. I want to ask two more questions about what happens. Um Okay, I know what the, the two are. The, the next question is going to be, how did Zenner lose his eye? How did Moira take out Zenner's eye? And then the other question is, how did Moira get away? So, Zach, you've already gone. So, Josh and Dylan, think about that for a moment. And if somebody has something. Mm. We could do, I, I'm thinking um, she could have, you know, swung at her at him with a knife, and the knife scarred him and mm -hmm. took out his eye in the process. That sounds good. Good knife to the eye. That's mm -hmm. classic. She's probably and, got like an eye uh, removal bullet. You know what? Let's <laughs> uh, AKA bullets. <laughs> uh, I say that the cut went across the nose and across the eye. To give, like, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Badass yeah, yeah. scar for everybody who's doing fan art for the show. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, might be so. me later, but yes. There we go. Great. Uh, all right. So, Josh, how did how did Moira manage to to escape uh, in a way that maybe especially pissed off the marshal? Yeah. Ooh. So, uh, <clears throat> so we've established that this is like she robs this jewelry store. Uh, this is so. This is after her husband died, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So she has her magic bullets. So I think that this is probably one of the first jobs she did and she's panicking and everything's kind of going to hell. So she doesn't really know what these bullets are. Um, she's like, you know, she's, she's hurt this guy, but his marshals are coming in. And uh, so she just grabs the first bullet out of the bag, loads it into the gun and fires and the room goes completely dark. Oh, nice. And, and the chaos, uh, and the mess of it all, it was some kind of darkness bullet. Um, she just makes an escape and, and, and gets out. And uh, the marshal is angry because he was embarrassed in front of his men. Why don't we ratchet that up a notch? And the marshal actually um, thought he was shooting Moira and shot one of his men. Oh, oh shit. That brings up the like, the, like, I don't care for her very much angle a little bit. This, what? Well, I, I don't know if this is appropriate to ask yet, but I'm curious what kind of person this marshal is and if he likes his men or if he's just the worst. Uh, who knows? Okay. Um, so, Amelia, is okay. there anything that you'd like to change or modify or add to all of that since this is about your character? I, I love all of that. I will add... Um... I, I I love that it was one of the first jobs and I'll say it was one of the first jobs because um, she did not like the sister-in-law. The sister-in-law thought that her and the husband should not have gotten married. And so Moira is like, Moira is like that bitch. She's going to be one of the first ones that I rob. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly where everything is. <laughs> awesome. All right. Great. Now, so yet, Josh has established that she's got darkness bullets, so that should be helpful. Yes! I mean, that one was. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, Maura, I hope you know that that's exactly how that went down. 
And the fact that, that not only did you take my eye, but you, uh, <laughs> that <laughs> many of my men were hurt and one of them was killed that night, uh, I'm going to have a great deal of pleasure when they hang you, woman. I'm, I'm sure you will if that was going to happen, but like, it's not, it's not going to happen. You can fantasize about it all you want in your, in your wet dreams, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to live. I'm going to live like I always do. So yeah, I'm going to take you, a nap in the meantime. <laughs> uh, you hear a gun cock and he's like, if you want, I reckon you might be able to get out of those uh, cuffs. You're welcome to try and escape. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> ain't gonna try with you breathing over me right now, but uh, maybe later. She kind of <laughs> rolls over and lays down on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she's, she's really not giving this to him, is she? <laughs> no, she literally, like, She's had a gun pointed in her face so many times at this point. She's like, you know, one way or not, if he shoots me, that's just how it is. <laughs> if you want to have a moment with me, you're going to have to earn it. Exactly. No, I mean, she's super groggy, so. That yeah. too. Yeah. It was just... That's good stuff. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so at this point, you do hear like the door to the, like, um, so some train cars, like Harry Potter style, have like the sliding doors and they're like yeah. private private cars um you hear the doors kind of um (laughs) you hear a lock get undone and then the door slide open um and then you you hear like some voices and they're speaking really low um and you hear zenner say uh she's awake so we're gonna take this outside and the door slides shut uh, but you can still kind of hear their voices a little bit if you try really hard are you awake enough to try really hard to to hear what's going on do you want to try um, she wants to try, but I don't know how successful she'll be because she is very groggy. Yeah, this is going to be, um, She's going to try though. Yeah. So the difficulty for this is going to be a three, um, and it's going to be will because like, if you mm-hmm. were awake, mm-hmm. you could probably hear it, but you have to like use your will. She's trying to, to push past it. Fog. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, right. let's see what I wrote. One. All right. The difficulty I said was a three. So you can either choose to, um, it's an overcome, so you can succeed at a cost or you can spend a fate point to succeed at a minor cost. Um, I'm going to do succeed at a cost. Cause like, she's still fighting through this. Like, I don't think that she would do anything perfectly right now. So. All right. Yeah. Let's see. So what would be a good cost for that? Um, hmm. You know, I know exactly what the what the um what the cost. I was going to say is. maybe he like kicks her in the kneecap or something. I don't know. No, I think that the the cost for oh, that's a good point. Yeah, let's make this vicious. So um, you can choose to decline this if you you want to. So yeah. I think that the cost for this is that he is definitely going to. Um, uh, oh, I'm trying to think. He is a U.S. Marshal, so I've got to be. Um, but we've kind of established he's also kind of a douchebag. So if there's oh, yeah. no one there to witness him. Yeah. Um, he's going to basically kind of like come back in and having noticed you like tilt your head and stuff. Oh, is that for me, kiddo? Yeah. Thank you. Aww. My daughter just brought me brought me some food. Aww. She's the Aww. best. She wants a Aww. shout out. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to wait until yeah. I know she's, she's watching. Yeah. Um, so the cost is going to be that he's going to come in. Um, and he's going to work out some of his anger issues, giving you a couple of punches to like the torso and basically give mm-hmm. you the mild consequence bruised ribs. Oh yeah. Um, no, I'm, will... I'm done, done oh, for you. that. Yeah. It will not. Um, so usually costs for overcome roles don't involve consequences. Like that's, that's something that like typically you don't do, um, unless the story calls for it. I think that we've set things up this way that yeah. it would work as a yeah. cost. Mm-hmm. Um, and Amelia, you're um, agreeable for that? Yeah. No, so it's right. mild uh, bruised ribs? Yeah, bruised ribs. Um, since it was not done during um, like a conflict, he does not get a free invoke on it. Um, where like if it was done in a conflict, he would get a free invoke. Um, he does not get that because that's part of the, the cost of this is that you you like can absorb less stress when there's a conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so... Uh, so yeah, so basically he, he pounds on you a couple of times and, um, you hear the door like slam shut and the lock click. Mm-hmm. 
was she able to hear anything from outside as a result oh, of that? Yeah, success. Uh, I just wanted to beat you up. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you. I have lots of food being delivered to me. We're Ooh. gonna take breaks. We're gonna take a break. Oh yeah. All kinds of um, shout outs. Ooh. Yeah, shout outs food. All right, so uh, what you hear is them uh, kind of say, uh, saying, the gist of it is, is that like, you know, we've got Madam Charlotte. Um, the Senator will be very happy that we've managed to find her and bring her back. Um, we have to be very careful with Ooh. her. Um, she is um, very, uh, uh, she is very unusual and has allies everywhere. So we have to be like at our like top to make sure that like we can't rest on our laurels, just assuming that like, okay, we've gotten out of town. Um, we don't know who might be coming for her. So that's gotcha. the gist that you get Moira. Okay. Yeah. And she, um, obviously she can't see, she can't really move after that. She just kind of like worms her way across the ground. It's like, Charlotte. Charlotte, are you in here? Yes, yes, I am. Who was oh, that man? Crap. Oh, he's he's a giant pain in my ass. Don't don't worry about it, uh, Marshall. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. U.S. Marshals are are my favorite. Um, yeah. So, um, were you ethered as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm still I'm still pretty messed up. Well, right, from right. that and from the shit kicking he just gave me. Yeah. Um, are <clears throat> any of the boys here? The hell if I know. I assume so. Well, um, that would be great. Um, uh, Peacock? Harrington? Oh, uh, do, uh, oh, oh, you you oh. meant like literally right here? Oh no, they're they're not oh. here. It's just you and me, I think. Okay. Um, well, it seems that we're aboard some sort of train, and, and given that they just mentioned uh, my ex-husband, I'm presuming that we're heading east. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ex-husband, I'm writing that down. Uh, yeah, oh, right. yeah. No, that's a that's a safe assumption. I'm wanted in a couple different cities on the coast. Uh, uh, Baltimore for that for that bank robbery, which is probably what he's kicking me for. Yeah, it seems. Uh, yeah, my uh, my husband has. He's a, a state senator for Baltimore, so uh, that is definitely or Maryland. Maryland, yeah. So that's that's definitely where we're headed. Yeah. Oh, shit. Fuck. All right, and we cut back to the guys. Um, let's see. We've been uh, just a, a moment. We've been playing for about an hour and a half. Um, do we feel like a 10 minute break now or do we want yes. to? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I have that way to. you can stretch your legs, bio. get something to drink bio for sure. Um, so let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break. We'll meet back here at, um, 37 minutes past the hour. Um, it's 7 PM for me. It's, it's Eastern time, but we'll meet back here in 10 minutes. Sounds All right. good. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Cool. Bye.
and we are back. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to this Learning to Play Fate Weird West Session 3 Eastbound, uh, where everybody is currently on board a train heading east. And uh, our good our good friends Harrington, the Reverend C.J. Haggard, and Herbert Peacock Hessenwing are trying to rescue uh, Madam Charlotte, who they know is on the train, and Moira, who they're guessing is on the train. And Moira is actually on the train with Madam Charlotte. Indeed. So we've got a we've got a lot going on. So let's see what um, what Peacock, the Reverend Harrington, and the Straw what do we call it? Straw Dummy. S Skippy. Have going on. Yeah, Skippy. Yeah. Skippy the Straw I Dummy. Have, or I had thought. Um, uh, so my first thought is kind of kind of going picking back on what you what the uh, marshal had said about or whoever had said about uh charlotte knowing a lot of people and kind of leveraging kind of my risky contacts is, is would i have i seen anybody that i would know that would be kind of on that shady level that i might be able to talk to and if not i have another idea but well let's let's rephrase um to what end do you want to run into risky contacts on board this train uh mm -hmm. To well, because I know that that's I'm, I'm a you know we're assuming that we're assuming we know where the you know where she's being kept, and but we can't get back there with ease. So um, kind of wanting to see if we can find out for sure, uh, but mostly kind of have a way of getting uh, getting out of with the car we're in towards her end without you know getting into trouble basically. Uh, so you're you're trying to to look for somebody who can help get you past the or at least into the cargo cars. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like you're trying to make a contacts uh, yeah. role there, Herbert. Um, or Peacock, sorry. Um, Whatever. So let's see. Uh, well, first of all, your mild consequence, not sure where I stand, um, mm. That that's gone from last session. Okay, yeah. I thought that was I'm looking at your character sheet right now. Okay. Um, yeah, so you've got a contact skill. Um, I'm going to set the, the difficulty for this uh, to find the right person on board this train. I'm going to set the difficulty for this at a three. Okay. All right. So that's what I just rolled up one, but without my skill. So that would, I would meet it at three, I think, right? Yeah. Your contact is a two. So yes, that would make it a three. Uh, so that is um, success at a tie. Um, it is an overcome role for you to find someone on board who could help you with this. Um, so the tie means it's a, a minor cost. Um, are you okay with a minor cost? Do you want to spend a fake point? Um, what would I mean? What would a minor cost look like? That's a good question. Um, let's see. Um, hmm. So let's see. So you want to use your, you have a lot of risky contacts. Um, so I'm going to say that um, the minor um, the minor cost is going to be that your risky contact is going to be so happy to see you because and happy to trade you this favor as long as you don't mind carrying a package for him um, mm. on board the train until you guys get to Ohio and then he'll take the package back. He just doesn't want to be caught with, you know, all of the drugs that are in the package. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, I'll take that. Yeah. All right, great. It's not very big. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, like basically like a big thick envelope that you have to just put in your breast pocket or something. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So you come across, uh, come across this person. What is his name? His name is, no, I cannot say those name random name generator. That is going to destroy me. Um, well. Yeah, no. Um, we're going to say it is Simon Pimer is the name. Uh, and let's add him as an NPC to the board. That way we've got him. Simon Pimer. Um, and Simon Pimer, um, so you run into this guy and he's like, Aye! It's nice to see you, Peacock. How's it going? Uh, not, not so great right at the moment, buddy. <sighs> oh, you get in motion sick on the train, are you? No, I wish that was my problem. Um, I need you to, I need you to kind of keep it this a little hush, my friend. Um, Absolutely. But... You know me, I'm quiet as I'm a church mouse. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. Um, uh, so, Madam Charlotte is uh, is on this train, but she's oh, where's she at? She's so pretty. I'd like to catch a glimpse of, glimpse well, of her. She, she's in trouble. The ankles on trying, that woman. 
Yes, I, I know. No, I, I got you. Uh, but uh, but she's in trouble. We're looking to we're looking to help her out. So I'm trying to get off this train and onto the cargo car behind us without anybody seeing us. Could you you know have a way of helping us out? Wait, are you trying to tell me that uh, Miss Charlotte is in the um, uh, <laughs> it's in the criminal car? I don't know. Do you know anything about the criminal car? I've ridden in a few in my time. Well, she's in, let's just say she's in trouble. The less, the less I have to say, the, the better. So, uh, but we're trying to help her out. I nod the same way as I went to a blind bat. So yeah, I can, uh, I can get you into the cargo cars. The, the door there is just a simple lock. It's, it's not very difficult at all. Uh, uh, in fact, don't you have that girl Moria with her, with you? Uh, she's, uh, she's quite handy with the lock. Yeah, I, I wish we did, but I think she might be in trouble too. We're not for sure. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Well, aren't you boys fucked? Uh, so <laughs> feels that way. <laughs> yeah. All the responsible ones of you have been captured. So uh, I raise an eyebrow. <laughs> over, <laughs> over from my. I'm like sitting across from uh, from Skippy reading a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> Simon Skippy. pointed. Wait, are you the reading the newspaper or Skippy reading the newspaper? I'm reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Simon pointedly looks at the reverend as he goes, <clears throat> and then looks over at Skippy. <laughs> so, I I can get you I go back to that newspaper. Uh, if you want, I can I can go back there and unlock it for you now. The the um the conductors have been walking up and down, and uh, they've it'll be a while before they come back. Okay then, thank you, my friend. Uh, uh but don't don't be thanking me yet. I need a favor in return. All right, well, what's it gonna be, my man? Absolutely. I've got this package here. Um, then he pulls out the envelope and he's like, listen, it, it'd be nice if you hold it, held this for me until we were in Ohio. You gonna, you gonna tell me what it is or do I even want to know? Well, it's sort of like the Charlotte situation. Do you want to know? Okay, then. <laughs> I don't think uh, I do. <laughs> uh, he hands you the envelope. He's like, I don't, and don't lose any of it. If you lose any of it, I'm going to lose my head. And if I lose my head, you lose yours. All right. Well, wait. Not in that order. Up. Not in that order. All right. I got you, my man. All right. Um, so with that, um, you know, he tells you that, like, you know, he'll he'll let you know whenever the door is unlocked. Um, and about like fifteen minutes pass, um, he kind of like comes walking by, and he he like drops a a note, um, and it's basically has a check mark on it. Because you know that, that Simon doesn't know how to read or write. Um, but it's got a check mark on it to indicate that it's done. Uh, and so you, you can presume that the door is unlocked. And uh, is there, is, you know, can we look up and is there anybody coming our, our, our direction? No. I guess anybody else. Okay. All right. Well, let's go, go, boys. That's our signal. I put down my newspaper. I think we got to leave Skippy behind. What? You can't leave Skippy behind. He's quite literally dead weight. <laughs> so, You're not fine. I think we, yeah, we can just leave him with the newspaper so he's entertained. So, he's so yeah, he's just reading the newspaper. We'll just yes. hold up, you know, hold it up and put a pin in his hand so we can do the crossword. We, can, That's we fine. can just put his ticket in his shirt pocket so if anyone comes by, they'll know we could, that we he could, paid. We could easily, like, stuff the package in, like, his chest or something like that. That's actually such a bad idea, and we have to do it. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> oh my god. Why don't we shackle our obligations together into one bigger obligation? <laughs> That's, it's, a, it's a good hiding place. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah oh, I don't god. know about that. All right. yeah, I, think, I think I'm holding on to it. All right, <laughs> fine. Sure? Okay. okay. I mean, right. either one is. No, no, no. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. Yes, I'll stuff it in. I'll stuff it in Skippy. Okay. Skippy. Yeah, sure. All oh, right. No. So that aspect is now Skippy straw dummy with a criminal envelope. Oh, amazing. Um, I'm so glad. I can't oh. wait for all the Skippy fan art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, oh, well, all of those artists will make hay for all of that fan art. So. Uh -huh. Skippy, uh -huh. Skippy X Reverend is a canonical pairing <laughs> for all you fan fiction authors out there. Yes. <laughs> it's like an on again, off again, will they, won't they, a lot of tension, love, hate. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Um, Truly so a heart of straw. <laughs> uh all right so i just posted in chat asking if my kid my daughter astrid wants a, a shout out i'm trying to Aww. find out if she's around 
Um, she is not, but whenever she is around, uh, we're probably going to interrupt for a moment to give her a shout out. She wants to say oh, that yeah. on the screen too. Yeah. She's, she wants to be a YouTube star, so Aww. she loves it. Yeah. She's a good Aww. kid. All right. Uh, and I'm trying to make her a gamer and weirdly enough, every time I try to run a game for her, she ends up jamming it. So wow, uh, nice. a mm. kid after my own heart, Yeah, um, for real. Mm-hmm. except I have, I have to teach her that like, you have to let players win sometimes <laughs> because <laughs> like. I'll turn into the player and I'm like, I, I successfully rolled. Why is this bad? She's like, it just is. <laughs> Come on, dad. Oh my God, that's, yes. that's not the conceit that we're playing. With. Can we, Come can we on. please play a game of like tomb of horrors or something with her as the GM? <laughs> she would love it. She'd just be like, I kill you now. Uh, so what do you think about oh, it? Astrid? Actually... Do you want to, do you want to GM a game for us someday? Um, all right, so my daughter is actually here. She just posted uh, that in the chat that she's here. I want to say that my daughter Astrid is amazing and wonderful. She is smart and kind. Uh, she is a big gamer as well. She plays a lot of board games. She plays a lot of role-playing games. She plays Minecraft a lot, and she is great at Minecraft. Um, and uh, whenever she gets a moment, she is welcome to pop into my office and say hi on video. Aww. So. Thank if you. I may uh, ask, where, where'd you, where, where's the origin of her name? I like it. Uh, so the name Astrid, it weirdly enough, so when my wife and I were thinking of children names, before we knew it was a boy or a girl, we had a huge amount of boy names. But girl names were harder. So my last name is Ost, okay? And we wanted something that went with Ost. We wanted something that was distinctly feminine. And we wanted something that was also strong. So, like, it's really easy to find feminine names, and it's really easy to find girl strong names. But finding feminine and strong names together, were, you know, it's, it's actually kind of difficult. Um, and so we, like, went through a lot of names. And for the longest time, Liesl was in the running, because Liesl Ost, like, it really kind of phonetically mm-hmm. goes well. Um, mm-hmm. And then my daughter, or sorry, not my daughter, my wife one day was just like, how about Astrid? And we're like, I'm like, yeah, I like the name Astrid. And speaking of Astrid, she's right here. Come on, kiddo. Hey. Oh, hey. Hello. Hey. Yeah, Hi. right up here is the camera. I know Hi. everybody's faces are over there, but <laughs> this is where everyone <laughs> is. Hi. So they mentioned you running a, a game for us. Is that something you'd think about doing? I said in the chat, maybe. Oh, very oh, nice. Oh, cool. All right. Very nice. I'm liking so, the maybe. Yeah. So what kind of game would you that's, run That's for a us? good GM. Never commit to anything. <laughs> what was that? A Minecraft-themed game. A Minecraft-themed game. Yes. That sounds oh. awesome. Actually, Ooh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Good. That sounds so sure. fun. It's really sweet, actually. I know. Yeah. How uh, is there not a Minecraft RPG system? I have no clue. Oh, man. Like, that, that seems like such a no brainer. Yeah. Man, kids should just run the world. I know. They really should. All right. Thank you for indulging me. Um, I yeah, appreciate it. great. All right. Yeah, so, fun. we were playing something else. Um, so, yes. So, Skippy the Straw Dummy now has a criminal envelope. Um, the three of you are able to go into the back. The door um, is indeed open um, and you are able to kind of go in and then the first door into like the next cargo cart, cargo car uh, is also open. Oh, nice. He got he got a, a long a ways down the line, apparently. Well, no, no. You're just going from because what's the point in having the passenger car door open if you can't get into the cargo area? Oh, like, gotcha. Like, so yeah. they said two doors, both of them are open. Yeah, yeah so yeah, basically yeah. they're able to bridge the gap between the um, the passengers, gotcha. like cars, and the cargo cars. Mm-hmm. Um, and who knows what's going to happen here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd be kind of kind of jumping to do that, but I want to kind of um, just kind of slowly take a look in there just to see what we got going on. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so you open the door to the um, to the cargo cart, and you see the like the one that that's there. It's it's mostly filled with um, uh, lots of uh, you know like there are packages on one side and lots of mail bags um, kind of thrown around here as well. Okay. Because you keep on trucking through. Oh, yeah. hold on. Um, if any of them. Because this would actually be a good place to either invoke or compel um, your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My darling works for the post. It's almost like I was about to do that. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, um, John Darrington or John Harrington, um, 
my darling works for the post. I would like to compel that um, that she is actually uh, here. Like the next car down Oof. is going to be like the 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 car that the the post officer or or postman post woman um, you know actually kind of stays in. I mean, they take meals in the meal cart or in the meal car, uh, but you know, kind of stays with the mail to make sure that the mail is okay. So, um, so yeah, would you like that compel? It sounds like a yes. Uh, oh yeah. That's great. All right. Awesome. So the rest of us now have to figure out what your love is like. Um, Ooh. Yes. Cause we, this is, this is my favorite thing about fate that you can use in any game is to help have the players help make things. Um, mm-hmm. Is that okay with you, Dylan? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Um, so we need um, we need a name, we need a description, and we need why uh, she loves Harrington. I can do why she loves Harrington. Ooh. Okay. I don't know if I should say that first or if we should go, go ahead. In whatever order, right? go for it. I think she loves Harrington because they grew up in the same rural town in Arkansas and in her eyes she'll always be that sweet little boy who brought her flowers that is adorable and she's completely blind to the man he's become nice um I don't know I don't know about the last name but the name that came to mind was uh Audrey that's a good one Audrey how do you spell Audrey a u d r e y, like the plant. All right, oh, like the Audrey oh, too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're thinking All that, right. yeah, perfect. Audrey, that's enough of a name. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I guess we need now, uh, from you, Amelia, a description. A description. Um, she is um. At this time, I'm trying to think of this time. She is a um, mixed race uh, lady of like, one of her parents was black, one of her parents was white. And that's p- maybe part of the reason why it's such a big deal. Well, you know, the post office is such a great opportunity for her because they were like, you know, we don't care, you know, you, you can yeah. do the job, go for it. Um, and so she knew it would probably take her all around the country and away from uh, John, but she was like, well, this is a really good opportunity. Um, so, and she has, um, she has, uh, her hair in a, uh, like braid up on the top of her head and she dresses in the postal uniform. Uh, she dress, she likes to dress feminine, uh, outside of uni- uniform, uh, and her favorite color is blue. Excellent. I yeah. like this. All right. So, uh, so Harrington. Uh, the, a lot of you find that the door between the, the, uh, car that you're in and the next car is unlocked. Uh, and, uh, as everybody starts filtering in, um, uh, you hear a familiar voice say, John, uh, Audrey, John, is that you? Um, and she comes running up to you and gives you just a giant hug. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Audrey, I, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to be here. Oh boy. This is, this is well, timing. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was a last minute schedule change for me to be on this train. So it was incredibly fortunate. What, uh, what are you doing here? The last I heard you had, uh, gone West to make your fortunes. Yeah. Um, well, I'm heading back East to Baltimore. Um, or at least I think it's Baltimore. Um, I, I have to help a friend. They're a bit tied up right now. I, 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 oh, these your friends. Hello, please. Um, hello, my name is Audrey. My name is Audrey. It's a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Hi, Audrey. Sorry, Miss. I'm gonna uh, hit her with yes. the Miss, not the ma'am. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a that is uh, appreciated. Um, let's see. And hold on. Um, trying to think. I'm trying to think of a good pet name that she would have for John Harrington. Oh my goodness! Hmm. Like Harry comes to mind because he's John Harrington. Yeah, that's not a good pet name. What about so. what about Johnny Boy or something like that? Uh, that's a little. No, bit that's too, a little like, bit. 1960s, 50s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. 
Um, Dumpling. Um, that's like, that's very, you, hold on. That's very in a relationship. I don't know. You yeah. you mentioned the um maybe pit. you mentioned the flowers, had, the wildflowers um oh, that I yeah. that I brought. So maybe after name it after one of the flowers. Um I'm thinking tulip. Sure, tulip, I guess. Um, or uh, the I'm looking at like the buttercup. oxide the um buttercup. 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 Buttercup's yeah. not all bad. Right. Yeah, buttercup. Yeah, so so how do you guys all know buttercup? I'm sorry, John. <laughs> buttercup all right i have names yes oh no <laughs> he, is a, he is a man of many names essie in the chat's even better dandy short for dandy oh oh Dandy's yes really good that yes yeah. thank you essie all right we got so there. how do you guys know oh, dandy yeah. Oh my god. We we are work dandy, associates. Yeah. She kind of she kind of steps next to him. She's like my dandelion. We grew up together in Arkansas. And she kind of like looks up at him. <laughs> Whatever would take you away from home? Um what what would? Uh it just was like um I, again, these are all my friends and uh we're 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 by on business, uh, helping friends, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, whew. I was oh, not well, expecting this well, day to happen. Dandy, get it together, get John. Get it together. Get it together. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dandy, if, if you and your friends needed something that was, you know, being shipped by the post office, uh, I mean, I, I can definitely give you a couple of days after to until I report it. Um. Okay. Well, it's it's less of a something and more of a someone. I don't know if. Oh no, we don't ship. We don't ship children by by post. Um, usually, like uh, only those adults. More, those are more shorter <laughs> trips. I'm not sure you, you understand can't... what I'm insinuating. That's absolutely. Oh yeah, that's absolutely yes. not a joke. Though people would mail people. Yeah, that's why. They, it was, yeah. they would mail children to other yeah. relatives. I read about that the other day. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. Yeah. The postage was horrible. The person we're looking for has been shipped without their consent. Oh my goodness. I I, I only have... I mean, there's a couple of packages that might be that big. Uh, let, let's go and find out. I don't think it'll be what in about, this car. What about no? dynamite? I might need dynamite. <laughs> It, oh, it, you Mount, rascal! It's uh, I, I just like my I just crank my head joking. at at it, hearing it, yeah I just yeah the Joker here yeah the, it's that they think I'm joking um you know I I say off as an aside it's like oh, they think I'm joking now um I know he's never joking uh I, I'm just I'm just thinking hmm while 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 he's thinking I'm I'm gonna ask uh I'm gonna ask Audrey. Audrey, I suppose you wouldn't be able to get us into the U.S. Marshal's prison car, would you? Oh, no, no, definitely not. Um, that's, uh, there are many cargo cars between here and there. This is th just this one and the one that you came through, or the post office. What's between here and there? I, I have no idea. I didn't really pay much attention, to be honest. <laughs> is, there, is there an emergency exit onto the roof of this train? I mean, I would imagine there would be. I really haven't looked for one. Oh, there's one. It's not very well labeled. We should probably have a law about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and I can lobby for government regulation later. For now, we need to get on top of the train. Yeah, Peacock uh, is already like line, lining up packages to climb yeah. up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going nice. to... <laughs> Uh, I would actually like to compel Peacock, your aspect okay. first sweet, then sour. You've oh, been God. pretty sweet so far with everything that's been going on, like trying to get um, to get uh, Madam Charlotte. And you're just at the end of your rope. You're like, we have to have a pleasant conversation with this hillbilly from Arkansas. Um, and so you, before they even discussed it, you saw the escape hatch in the top of mm -hmm. the train car. And you managed to kind of like climb up there and like, you know, like open it and everything. And as you kind of like slam it down, um, it actually bends like the like 
it bends in a fashion that prevents it from being opened again. So basically, oh, you're the only one who will be able to get on top of the car here. Say that, that last part again. You will be the only one who can get on top of this train oh. car here. So they will not be able to follow you <laughs> onto the top of the train car. Well, I, li I like the way you led into it. And I think that all checks out. He definitely would be kind of like, this is, the, yeah. this is the end of my patience here. Seems sweet and all, but I got, I got shit to do. So I think that that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you some more fake points. And as a yeah, reminder, no, I'm gonna, I, I feel like yeah. I'm going to need them. Yeah. Yeah. And as a reminder, you, all of you can self compel. Like if there's a moment where you're mm -hmm. like, Hey, oh, I'm yeah, yeah. fuck this up. Will you give me a point? I usually will. Okay. So, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not pleased about being stuck on top of the train, but uh, got to deal with it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is, you don't even know that you're stuck on top of the train. You assume that you just come up first. Gotcha. Um, okay. I'd like to cut back to Moira. Yes. Um, so, okay. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that we're not spending too much time in one scene. So if mm -hmm. someone is getting yeah. like, if it's getting too focused in one area, please like, you know, you're allowed to prompt me. Um, so Amelia, we're back with you. Um, you and Charlotte uh, are the only ones in the car area currently um the like you have a mild headache but like that's all you have left from the either you don't like your thinking is no longer foggy you just have a mild headache it is yes. not an aspect so it's not going to be like compelled or anything it's just a it's decoration for the scene cool so. well i have two things i wanted to do number one i kind of wanted to i guess i don't know if this is an invoke or not but she would be kind of lying there on the floor, starting to mess with her handcuffs again. She'd be like, "Now this is, man, this is maybe not the time to bring this up. Do, do I know you from a couple years ago? I mean, I, we were just saying we both lived in Baltimore, so it might be good reputate, like good reputation of her back in Baltimore. She might actually know Adam Charlotte, not like." you know, best friends, obviously, but. Uh, let's see. Um, she's going to actually, uh, so this isn't going to be a, a compel um, yes. because it's not going to complicate things. Um, hmm. Actually, wait a minute. Could I complicate things? Uh, I am going to say, yes, let's make this a compel and make it horrible. Um, okay. All right. So Moira, uh, your East aspect of good reputation. Uh, I'm going to uh, compel you that um, you do know Miss Charlotte from out East, uh, but you know, actually, um, after she kind of starts talking for a bit, um, you start to put two and two together and you, hey, there's no little kiddo. Hi there. Oh, hey. Uh, hi. I hope you're having a good Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, so you too. You too. Let's see. All right, gotta go, bud. Love you, bud. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. That's all right. It's like family night. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Um, that's how young gamers turn into old gamers like us. Oh, he's all very right. much interested in this. Like he was asking me, "Was you, you playing a story game?" I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> all right, great. All right, so Moira, I'm going to give you. Well, it's a compel. You're going to recognize her. Um, I'm presuming that you're going to say yes and not decline it. But um, so. Where are my notes? I have, that's not my notes. That's my notes. Um, sorry. Um, didn't type it in. Damn it. Uh, so yes, you recognize her, um, Madam Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte must be her maiden name because you recognize her um, uh, as uh, 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 Mrs. Barber. Uh, Mrs. Deacon Atticus Barber, um, as the wife of the uh, uh, state senator from Maryland. Mm. Uh, and you know that um, she was she was wanted for murder in Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she um, she was wanted for murder. She, uh, there was a chase with the law and eventually she was found dead and like, that was the end of the case. Okay. So, so yes. Um, you ask her if, if, and she's like, I do, I'm sorry, dear. I don't recognize you from, from Baltimore. 
Um, but you, um, based on like some of her verbal tics, um, you put this together. So based on the verbal tics, I know that she is still that same person, even though she's prote- basically pretending to be an imposter of herself or some uh, other person. Well, there's, there's something going on here that you're not sure of, but you know that like Miss Charlotte is, um, may not necessarily be as she seems. Mm-hmm. Successfully faked her own death. That's pretty good. Yeah. That, that's the most interesting part to me. Yes, dear. I well, didn't know that you were for, also from Baltimore or, or that you were from Baltimore. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, usually I mean, I don't, usually I don't inquire too much about the histories of people who come out uh, our way. Yeah, that's usually a safe bet. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, it's a big city. Uh, yeah, it's a big city. And she starts kind of wandering because she's like, ooh, how much more do I want to tell this woman who may or may not actually be Madame Charlotte? Or even if she is, I'm starting to get weirded out and I don't know what what about her, but something is off. And she's like, yeah, you know, it's a big, it's a big city. Um, you know, it's it's good that we it's good that we ran into each other. I really do hope the boys are are, are after you. I don't even know if they're gonna know if I'm missing or not, even though we've been together a couple months. I guess I don't really keep regular habits. And she's gonna try and break her cuff, break out of her cuffs again. Sounds good. That sounds uh, like a burglary, and the difficulty this time will be a two since you're not quite as foggy. Oof. I see you got a zero. Yeah, I am gonna spend oh. a point. I am going to spend a point. Okay, now, so um, the difficulty is two. So to get out of them, that would be success at a minor cost. Or, and this is something to consider, whenever you roll, like, you can spend a fate point to re-roll dice. Okay. Okay. Um, It is statistically advantageous that if you roll three minuses or four minuses to re-roll instead of spending the fate point. Now, that said... I've advised this to people before and they've gotten worse roles. Oh God. Um, so you can either choose to spend a fate point and get success at a small cost, or you can choose to try and reroll and just get a blanket success because the difficulty of a two with a skill of three, um, that's all, that's your decision. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I feel like, Oh, I feel like there's a good chance of it um happening but at the same time it is stopping me from moving forward in my half of the uh the scene here so i'm gonna spend it to succeed at the cost all right what 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 aspect are you going to use to justify the fake point um i am going to use the aspect of uh impulsive and that she is she's tried now like two three times to break out of this and she's just literally like mangling her wrists to get them off or whatever she's just really getting sick of being contained but also she knows the longer she's in here you know in the back of her mind she's like okay well you know there's minimal supervision on this car and um you know marshall jackson is here is he just going to come back and kill me like there's like minimal supervision what's to say he's not like ooh, she fell down oops you know like yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> she's like i better get the fuck out of here all right great uh so you managed to um to to undo the cuffs you get them off i'm presuming you take the onion bag off of your head mm-hmm. and okay. she gets started and she will then try to get uh after uh madam charlotte uh um, if possible yes when you do that you see that um madam charlotte is sitting in one of the seats um she does not have an onion bag on her head and in fact she is not handcuffed at all Wow. Um, and oh, sitting shit. and mm-hmm. uh, next to her on the um, on the seat is a uh, small lockbox. It's about the size of a like if you go to like fairs, the little like, you know, um, cash box that a lot of vendors have. Mm-hmm. So basically like the size of a super thick Bible or something. Um, there's a, a lockbox like right next to her. Okay. And she's like, what is your plan? I mean, if I'm if I'm honest, I didn't know if I'd get get this far. Uh, uh, but now, I mean, hell, I I mean, I'm not in the, the 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 habit of waiting for people to rescue me. That's why I've stayed stayed alive this long. So uh, I'm gonna try and get the hell out of here. I mean, you look pretty comfortable. Are you gonna come with me or not? Oh yeah, I have absolutely no intention of going east um, any further than I have to. 
All right. Well, you want to try and break out of here then? And she would kind of in, look around the car and because obviously she has no awareness of that this is the last car in the line and like there's more ahead of her. So she would try and look around and just double check where the car is and the train lineup and um, how fast uh, they're moving. Well, um, I have to say, Moira, that um, that I wish you the best of luck in, in escaping. Not not because I think that you can't, but because I think that you can. I unfortunately am bound here. Uh, and she'll pause, like looking out the window and go, um, what do you mean by that, Madam Charlotte? Uh, you see that Madame Charlotte has, like, she's, Madame Charlotte is wearing, like, um, whatever, like, nighttime pajama she would have. It's very, you know, uh, very silky, not in a mm -hmm. sexy way, but in a comfortable kind of way. Yeah. Uh, and, but you do see that there is a, um, a thin silver, like, hoop, like, necklace that's around her that's, like, it's drooped behind her back. It's drooped across her, her chest. Um, and she's just like, I'm, I'm stuck here. Moira kind of intuits and she goes, wait a second. That's why you're, the necklace is why you're stuck here. I mean, I can get it off of you. Should I get uh, it off of you? I, I don't think that that would be wise. I don't think that you want to touch it. All right. Is there some kind of weird magic stuff going on? Is that why you're? Listen, I'm new to all this. I mean, I, I'm just used to Robin and stuff. I'm not used to devils and melting and dead orphans. But apparently this is in that category of things. Well, uh, Laura, uh, I, I, I hate to say, but um, you stumbled into to that, sort of, that sort of life and that sort of thing. Um, she's sure like, there are, there are various ways. Um, and she starts to kind of like pull up the bottom of her shirt. There, are, She says that there are various ways uh, to to control uh, the animated dead, and you see that she lifts it up right up, her shirt right up underneath her breast, mm -hmm. um, and you see that there are like two bullet wounds, like right mm. in her that are like old bullet wounds. Ah, so, okay. That's and she some... lowers it. She's oh, like, yeah. yeah. So I'm Charles undead. Mm -hmm. I know. And Myra just stunned looks at her and, and and just like ah that all dumb some things are are making sense um i'm real sorry for you but um i yeah i'm not sure if i'm gonna have a bullet for that <clears throat> Do you i don't know magic myself i mean i i got all and she kind of like wrestles through her bullets and she's like i mean i got all sorts of shit uh stuff in here uh that'll break spells and make spells and do all kinds of stuff but i mean i don't if you can find the reverend that would probably be our our best bet yeah 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 no uh all the magic stuff aside uh that would it, i mean they're all behind. They're all behind us, as far as I'm aware. I, I, well, I don't. Uh, well, if you can head back west, gather them up, get them on the next train out to Baltimore, and 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 rescue me in time. Oh, Either gosh. that, or or if you have the strength, you can put a bullet in my head now and prevent me from having to go back and deal with my ex-husband. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, she. No, you know everyone knowing her internal struggle she's just she, part of her is like yeah i could and then the other part of her is like that's the one thing i said i would never do and she just looks at me and goes ah well i mean uh let's 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 handle the getting off the train bit and i don't know uh, maybe there will be somebody here i don't know i just get a feeling and i would actually like to invoke um i've got a bad feeling about this uh, what would you see like if she do? could see if she could get a vision about if they're on the train or not or like a feeling that they're on the train because like i feel I like, like she would ah. trust that intuition yeah yeah that sounds good let's see um cool. why don't we do uh yeah but i want to make it bad for you so oh of course um yeah so i've got a bad feeling about this um so you indeed have a um so you kind of you know, try to activate whatever visions you have that you're never able to activate. 
Um, but for some reason, this time you're uh, actually able to um, to see a, like brief flashes. Um, you see a brief flash of um, uh, of a a straw man reading mm-hmm. a newspaper on the track. Yes. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and so like you get that vision. Um, you do recognize the straw man as something that Harrington has made before. Mm-hmm. So you get the feeling that they probably are on the train. Um, you also get another crazy vision, which I need to actually um, call up some artwork for the lot of you. Uh, okay, I'm going to sweet. I'm gonna I'm going to paste it into the Zoom chat so that you can all see it yourselves. And then I'm going to call it up in my oh, browser. This is great. Yes. So, um, so your idea of this vision of a wagon wheel is indeed true. Um, and you know what? I'm going to post this oh, link man. into the streaming chat as well. Yes, um, I love it. I love so, biblical angels. Yes, yes, thank you. So this is Ophanim, um, the wheels of Galgalin. Uh, this is an angel, um, an an honest to goodness angel, uh, and it is super fucking weird um Mm -hmm. it's considered the wagon wheel of god um and so um so yes it is super weird super creepy i found this great art um on art station for this with like giant eyes and just crazy crazy stuff um and so this is also part of your vision um and i'm going to shut it off because streaming like that through zoom and or obs and all of that is is really messing with my computer but yeah, yeah. you get that as a vision and uh you're basically like with that you're you kind of like collapse down into the seat and you're like whoa well yeah exactly she's like stunned because like y- yeah she's she's had stuff like you know the straw man thing before but not and it she takes a minute to absorb like okay they're here but then, yeah, the weird rotating orbs with, with eyes, she's just, like, disturbed. And she's just, like, Rock just sit, sits down. Like a wagon wheel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she just sits down, like, on the other bench uh, next to Madame Charlie. She's like, oh, what the hell? And I guess it'd be a good time to jump back to the rest of them. Yeah. Um, and was- I've also added an aspect to the scene called Mysterious Lockbox. Yes. Uh, because I want to make sure that that has attention on it. And Moira, did I give you your compel aspect? Or, I'm sorry, your fate point for that compel? Um, which compel? For the, for the lockbox? No, no, no. No, I think you've got all your fate points. You have five fate points. Yeah. You're doing five. Well, yeah, no, because I, I, okay. one was used and then one was given. So we're... Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Cool. So yeah, so that happens. Then we go back to the um, to the three of you. So, uh, Reverend Harrington and Peacock. Well, Peacock, you're on the roof. The train. So let's yeah. let's start with with Peacock. Peacock, the wind is blowing past you. Um, the sun is shining down on you. Uh, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to be trying to hustle as safely as I can across the top of the. I mean, is there a way? I mean, how big of a space is it between cars? Is something I could like reach across basically I'm, i want to try to get to the back as like as as much as as much as i can oh you can actually you can jump from each of them i mean this is okay. an action movie we're doing after yeah all. Okay. um so yeah so you're able to do that and as you get um closer to the um to the prisoner car to the criminal car uh you do see that there is in fact um uh an individual up there on top of the uh the criminal car just in case the specific thing happens <laughs> oh no! Uh, so hi, it's me, the oh, train now, ceiling yeah. guard. Now, yeah. since you said the since, well, I mean, come on, like, hey, this is the weird yeah. West. It stands. Yeah, I'm not saying they're yeah. wrong. Like, yeah, no, I mean, like, anyway. So, um, they did have a talk about like you know someone might be coming for Madame Charlotte, and yeah. you have to be like extra careful. Uh, that was you know me telling you that oh yeah they're, you not, established they're it. not stupid guards they're not, they're not wrong so um <laughs> you did wrong. Say that you were now you said you were being careful so that means i'm not yeah. going to say that, that he automatically notices you because okay. you said that you were doing this very carefully so i will give you an opportunity to make a stealth roll uh to not be noticed yes okay so um, i think so 
Uh, it's windy up there, so yeah. like it's very hard to hear anything. Yeah. Um, the the sun is shining. Um, you know, it's easy to get bored up there. I'm only going to set the difficulty for this stealth at two. Okay. Okay. All right. So you can go ahead and make your roll. All right here. So... Okay. I can just click the skill and have it it'll roll, right? Yep. Okay. All right. Oh hey. shit. All right, that's a negative one. That's bad. Mm. Yeah. So um, now uh, oh. you roll two minuses. <laughs> so statistically, rerolling um, is kind of uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, or you can start spending some fake points. Um, or you could succeed at a cost. I can see it succeeded at a cost just even that that badly. What's the negative? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, no, okay. no, no, you can succeed at yeah. That's that's that is, in my opinion, one of the great things about fate is that you can say like, I still want to succeed. Like, mm -hmm. you just have to pay a price yeah, for that. Definitely. Um, and my price for that is that you do not get seen by this person, but you fall off the train. So okay, that is well, the the cost for that. Is that yeah, now you're in a situation where you have to get back on the train? Yeah, no, I don't want to risk you. that. So I think I'm gonna. Um, yeah, I think I would like to invoke um, uncovering Charlotte's past and Charlotte's confidant and bouncer and blow both of those to get a success. All right, go ahead and that, yeah. um, spend those fake points. Yeah, because falling off the train is not something I want to do right now. Mm -mm. Yeah, that looks bad. But you wouldn't be noticed. Uh, so you have successfully <laughs> oh, uh, yes. gone. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be noticed rolling in the dirt. Fell off the train without a trace. <laughs> Just to let you know, like, I would give you a chance to get back on the train, because it's no fun if you get left behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it is. Anyway, so, oh. um, so yeah. Oh, wait a so second, you... though. Okay. Okay. So, no, I, I you, don't. yeah, you don't get seen by them, uh, or by this one person. Um, what would you like to do? Well, um, if, I, if I've seen that I feel like I've got the drop on them, then I think <clears throat> what I want to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, go, like, drop between the whatever cars I'm closest to so that yeah. I can, and kind of, uh, <laughs> this might be just as stupid. I might end up just falling off the train anyway. Um, and wish I had not spent the fate points, but, uh, and kind of shimmying along the side of the train to try to like, basically like uh, attack them from, from without seeing me either that or look for either kind of take them out to attempt to, or look for a way to get on the car. Okay. So you, well now, so you're trying to climb along the side to yeah. get the surprise on the guy on top. And what yeah, you're trying to do if I can is... See, or, you, you, but if I can see it, basically, like, I prefer, obviously, to get in that car uh, without him noticing either way, you know? That's, I mean, I've seen, if I don't have to, like, bother with the, the effort doing that, but... Well, why don't we go ahead and just make you, like, do a roll for you to, like, climb along the train? Okay. Um, so, so one of the things that I don't do with Fate is typically, like roll for every minor thing but yeah. i think that at this point like climbing along the last yeah. train car to get in position for the next thing i think is dramatically appropriate here yeah yeah so um so yeah i think that this sounds um like a what is it an athletics yeah. is that the right one athletics or physique i i think mm -hmm. it's physique oh i accidentally rolled your physique um, I think it's physique because you're trying to kind of pull yourself along. Let me okay. actually look up skills and fate. I almost never go to the fate. I'm going to cross my fingers that athletics would be more appropriate. <laughs> um, let's see, skills and stunts. I mean, probably. Oh, whatever you see. I, I think the, okay, yeah, the, athletics the allows book you to for moving. Yeah, athletics allows you to overcome any obstacle that requires physical movement, jumping, okay. running, climbing, swimming. So yes, yeah. athletics. All right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna set the difficulty for this at a three. Boom! boom, boom. Hey, you got a three. Right. Nice. Uh, so, so that is success at a minor cost. Right. Um, I got nothing hmm. to spend, so I gotta take whatever that cost is. Um. Yeah. So, what would be a good minor cost here? Um. I know what the minor cost is going to be. The train is kind of going around a slight curve. And the engineer at the front of the train sees you climbing on the side of the train. All right. 
So the minor cost is that someone knows that you're climbing on the train, but it's yeah. literally on the other end of the train. Okay. And they don't have walkie talkies or, right. you know, someone's going to have to physically go back there. Right, um, yeah, there another threat. Yeah. All right. So that is it. That's a great minor cost. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. So you're able to do that. Let's go back to um, to Harrington and uh, Haggard. So Reverend Harrington, uh, you are there with Audrey. Well, this has been a delightful reunion, but we do have to get to our friend. Um, the Reverend's getting impatient. Is Miss, is there anything you can do to help us get round about six to eight trains back? Car, cars back. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't think that I can. Um, uh, let's see. She's. Hold on. I'm gonna look at downtown. I mean, did anybody just notice me jump through the roof? <laughs> they did, but they also like tried the thing, and it's. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Right. That was yeah. part of the the compel for you. So, um, uh, she actually she says that. I mean, there's a way that we can try, but it's risky. When oh. you say risky, would would you estimate that being more or less risky than firing a gun inside this car? <laughs> so we cut to uh, the camera um, in front of the train, like long before right. in front of the yeah, train. Yeah, yeah. And there's a there's a mailbag hanging on a hook. Oh, um, cool! This as is she, great. As she explains that, like, um, that instead of her like taking the bag off of the hook. Well, when she takes the bag off the hook, the two of you could jump onto that pole and then jump back onto the train further down. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Sure. You could do, yeah. If only we had some kind of disposable humanoid facsimile homunculus that we could put into high-risk situations like this one. Yeah, if only we could... And so, so it so it just cuts to like us walking up and and we're like and we're like come on Skippy <laughs> and just crap. <laughs> All right, you guys, weekend at Bernie's, the the straw doll. Um, oh my god, yes. The Reverend is this close to just shooting the lock with his gun, but he's just like, man, I. I don't even know. <laughs> like, he's like, I do really like Moira, but the law is the law. <laughs> and we're going to cut to Moira. Yay! So, so Moira, you're in there with Madame Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So okay. she's like, yeah. Okay, so Man. Moira's plan, anyway. <laughs> she thinks that you're on the train, but she's not 100% sure. Also, comma, between her and the possible people that are with her, is a car full of marshals that hate her so her idea is to bust out the back door and make a run for it however she is going to ask first of madam charlotte you know it's been it's been bothering me what what is in that case her eyes kind of drift over uh she gently puts a hand on it she says evidence of uh, of what? Of many mistakes. All right, you 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 want to expand, expand on, that? on that? No, not really. No? If I did, I, I <laughs> wouldn't be in a lockbox. <laughs> Shit, that's true. Is, I mean, yeah, can't fault it, you for that. It is um, it is damning to uh, to many people. All right. Uh, well, I, like I can't help you with your. You lose something? Uh, no, I said, I'm, I said I'm liking this. I said, I said. Okay. No, no, no. I, uh, uh, there was like a couple like of of of, uh, of you you guys be like, Meh. and I was like, oh God, is my internet going? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, so, it's just noises. So, so Moira, at this point, um, one of the marshals comes to to check on you. Uh, oh, they fuck. unlock the they unlock the lock and slide the door open, and they like see that you're there. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, you're, you get the drop on this person since, you know, you can hear the lock opening. Um, I'll give you the first action on this marshal. All right. Um, she is going to go for the, for the knockout. 
with uh her her um what is it fight all right that makes uh, sense i'm i'm going to counter roll with the u.s marshals let me just see what i uh okay let me give them skill rating Uh, okay, so I've given them a skill rating. They are going to. Um, hold on, I'm just trying to actually make accurate notes so I'm consistent. Um, let's see, I'm rolling and I got a zero plus three is three. Oof. So, what was your fight? Go ahead and make your fight roll, Mora. Uh, just just so a you know, one. This is, Okay, so this is an overcome roll. This is not a conflict. We're not going to go back and forth like that. This yes, is just yes, a yes. U.S. Marshal. Um, so with that three, um, so as your, uh, is it your fist? Are you kicking him? Like, how are you doing this? Yeah, like fist. Okay. And I've got the fate points to uh, burn. Burn, yes. In this uh, situation. Fair enough. Um, and, and we can definitely go there. But so um, you bring your kind of like your fist up to to hit him um and as you kind of like manage to hit him square in the jaw like you got a really good hit in um you see a flash of silver light um coming from a pendant around his neck uh and the hit uh doesn't seem to to hurt him nearly as much as what you think mm. um so there is there's something 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 going on here um if you want, you can choose to spend uh, some fate points to like to keep this going. But I just want to make sure that you understood the the basic narration of what's going on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, she. Yeah, I'm gonna spend a fate point so she can knock him out and get to the back of the train. All right. What aspect are you spending your fate point on? Let me. Let me see. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna use it to invoke uh one of her gun ammo well you're using your fist how is the okay. gun ammo helping never mind i will not okay. do that uh i'm All gonna right. what am i gonna do crap you've got yeah, a lot of aspects that work sense. i know i'm just trying to wanted by the law your widow who turns Impulsive. to a life of crime yes uh i'm gonna use uh, wanted by the law yeah all right yeah. great uh, I'm not going to spend any more fate points, even though I have them. And you managed to successfully knock out this this U.S. Marshal. Cool. So the U.S. Marshal, she falls, collapses to the ground unconscious. Um, and you're able to, I don't know, what do you want to do right now? She wants to um, escape out the back of the train, you know, the not the door that leads to all the marshals, the one that leads out. And she's going to um, try to basically do the opposite of what uh harrington is doing and get up the train using the top of the train <laughs> so you want to go to the to the back of the train climb up to the top and try and then to go back yes okay sounds yeah. good um all right so i would like you to please make a stealth roll i'm going to set the difficulty for this at a five because okay. you're trying to sneak Oof. through a train car full of u.s marshals or sneak above the train car, yeah. Well, no, you're trying to sneak through to get to the back and then get to the top. Like, as oh, a result of this okay. roll, you'll get to the top, Like, but you'll have successfully gotten through the train car. and. Okay, the okay. So the, oh, my mental yeah, image of side. it... Yeah. My I'm mental sorry, image of... Oh, She's got marshals on either side of her? Um, My mental model... Model yeah, our is, mental models might have been slightly different here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, so you... you like right now, there's no one in the the room that you're in. You go out into the hallway. The hallway runs the one side of the train, the train car. Like there's okay. not a hallway in the middle of the train okay. car. It's, it's a hallway on one side of the train so that the rest of the train car are the rooms so that they're more spacious. Okay. So I was, I thought I, we were just, uh, me and Charlotte were in one train car by ourselves. There was just like seats and that's about it. And there's that's nobody else in there with us. Okay. Yeah. No, um, there are multiple, multiple rooms. Okay. Uh, and so we're just going to move around. For, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you're trying to take advantage of um, being able to like, like sneak through very quickly um, without getting caught. Yes. But yeah. She's trying to leave. Let's yeah. Let's leave it at that. She's trying to get out of this train car unseen. Um, um, 
Yes. So let me try and do this. All Plus right. three. So okay. I set the difficulty of five. So you're too short. Unfortunately. Um. Hmm. You have you have options. It is an overcome. I do. I do. I do. Um. I'm going to uh, use what who turned to a life of crime. She's she's probably pretty pretty. Just slippery. Good at sneaking. Yeah, she's slippery. That's how she's lived this, this long. Yeah, a she greasy said. gal on her hands. All right. Um, that will be a tie, which is a success at a minor cost, because I'm not going to spend any of my fate points on that. Mm -hmm. um, the minor cost for this is going to be that um, that you are going to uh, uh, you are going to drop something that identifies that you've walked past um, okay. Zenner's car. Right? Oh, good. Okay. So, like, for instance, like, maybe you have a handkerchief that you were using to, like, I don't know, that mm -hmm. was in your back pocket or something, uh, and that's going to, like, fall to the ground unnoticed by you. So, mm -hmm. um, so he won't notice now, but it's a minor cost, so. Um, so, Moira, you managed to, like, get out um, and climb to the top. When you climb to the top, you uh, get spotted immediately by the uh, U.S. Marshal that's on top of the train, which mm -hmm. is completely unexpected by you. And at that very same moment, both of you hear a very loud sneeze. Oh, shit. <laughs> yes! That. Peacock, oh. would you like a fate point for hay fever? I'm, I need it. So I, right. I have to. I, I'm a zero. I have to. You do. It. You do. I totally forgot about the sneezing. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Uh, so, yes. So, everybody yeah, okay. knows. Everybody knows that you're there. Okay. This damn uh, dummy will be the death of us all. Yes. So that one marshal who's looking out from the train car is like looking at Moira, looking at him, looking at Moira. <laughs> I only have one gun. I know. Meanwhile, There's I'm two criminals. A okay. So let's go. Let's go back to the Reverend and to yeah. Harrington. Uh, so where are the two of you at, and what would you like to accomplish? Where are so, we actually? We're in the we're in the the postal car with yeah. Uh, with yeah. Audrey. Yeah. And we've retrieved the dummy. Now, now I'm a man of the cloth. I'm not a scientist, but the physics of this have got my head swirling. Not going to so, lie, okay. I don't think I don't think Skippy's the only dummy here between all of us. Oh. <laughs> so so how how do the physics of this suggestion work? Because well, so, you're asking me I, as if I knew. No, no, I'm asking. I'm asking the GM, preferably okay. God. <laughs> sure. So, um, so here's the thing: the way that those hooks work is that they're not like static, like metal hooks or anything. What they are is basically they are kind of like long triangle-shaped wood, okay, that holds like a mailbag out at the the end. And huh. you can grab it, and it it goes like a door, okay. So it it's not rigid; it will actually swing. Oh, okay. So you can, as you're grabbing it, it's moving, and you take it off the thing, and basically the that long triangular end that has it will kind of like whip forward forty five degrees, or sorry, yeah. ninety degrees, and then whip back into like into place. Okay. So and, and and this train is moving slow enough to like facilitate that kind of interaction. Uh, it has to because that's how the mail gets off that hook. Okay. If it was going too fast, sure. um, you know, uh, Aubrey or Audrey wouldn't be able to get the mail. Yeah. Okay. I'm still the Reverend is still still skeptical, but not entirely disbelieving. This is admittedly a ridiculous plan. As I said, I think we're all dummies in this situation. <laughs> Listen, you guys can try to open up that hatch. You can like jump off the car and then get back on the train you know as it comes by you have other options i just mm. proposed that one as the craziest uh option. <laughs> it, it, it is it is the, and it gives me a spiciest. lot of yeah oh god I'm will we lose skippy though will i'm just imagining skippy? randy is a sommelier at the restaurant he's like well if you ask me i do have a recommendation from our from our daily specials mm -hmm. <laughs> well i mean uh, yeah listen it's not your job to give the us best. good advice. Yeah. The best games are the slow and cautious ones. <laughs> oh, okay, of so the Reverend is very impatient. And at this point, he's feeling like he's, a, he's about ready to try one more thing before he just shoots the lock off of the door. All right, let's, let's go. 
Come on, Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> What's what? What? Do yeah, you yeah. D- tell, describe this to me. So, so like, yeah, we open up the hatch, and so we place him. Like, what is it? We he, he there's a hook that we place him on. Sure. If that's what confused, that's what you left him yeah. back in the seats. No, did we leave? Where? No, you guys went. Okay, him. we got him. So oh, okay. yeah, my my original thinking was like there is some kind of Yidus trapezus situation happening with uh with these hooks, and that <laughs> I would need to use use Skippy as like a test dummy to see if a human being could survive that kind of velocity. Oh, okay, but all right. That was like yeah, my thought, thinking. Yeah. No, I mean uh, no, there's. Yeah, there's there are like multiple male spots along here. Why not? You can do a test with Skippy. What but right. but I also like. I mean, I know that. I guess we could just take the envelope out of Slippy. But yeah, <laughs> if, we only, <laughs> if we only had a brain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my. I mean, I I could I could conceivably roll lore here to think of a better idea, but I'm I'm only so invested in this whole situation. Uh, <laughs> I say, uh, Mr. Harrington, why don't you take the lead? <laughs> and, and I just look at Skippy. Hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, um, what I what I envision happening is like the way that it ends up happening is that it just like Skippy just smacks. The, the the back yeah, car. I was, <laughs> I was gonna say it'd be really fun if like you just go hmm and then it cuts to that like yeah. three way standoff on the roof and it and a dummy just like like flies into the Fly, air. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was just, thinking. Like, it just, into oh, the sky. just launches into the sky. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. Let's. I, yeah. I mean that's that's what I got. That that sounds that, fun to me. Yeah, that sounds great. That's exactly what I was thinking. We're on the same page here. All right. So it sounds to me, uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I want to try and recite back what I heard, <laughs> is that um, uh, Harrington and the Reverend are going to check the first like mail post to see if it's survivable using yeah. um, the straw man. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting the straw man's name. And I feel Skippy. so bad. Skippy. Um, you're going to try and use Skippy on that and you're going to put Skippy on it. It's going to go the 90 degrees in the same direction as the train. And then it's going to flack back just at the same time as it's going to fly through the air and potentially you didn't say this, but I'm thinking hit the U S marshal that's on top of the train. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're not yes! Aiming, but yes! This, yes! Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> refuse. Yeah. All right. So, so this is, is it a shoot? Um, <laughs> I, I think I, she even implies <laughs> aiming. I think this might uh, this, this might be like athletics? a physique or athletics. Uh, I'm going to like, say that okay. it's going to be. Uh, you know what? Let me read physique because like you're trying to throw something. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's see. I, physique. I think throwing is athletics. Well, uh, um, physique like, overcome any obstacles that require the application of brute force. Mm. Um. Mm. And but it also could be athletics because physical movement. If it's anything in the deca decathlon, you roll athletics. I think I can see it either athletics or physique. So I'll let you use whichever ends up being better for you. Um, uh, I'm going to set the the difficulty for this at a. Um, I'm going to say at a. Oh, I'm trying to take that guy out. It's ridiculous. I'm going to put the difficulty at a five. Um, All right. So you can either succeed at a cost because it will be an overcome, or you can spend a bunch of fate points to make it awesome. Let's so, let's. I'm going to use up as many fate points as I can. Is um, it the hill you're prepared to die on? Yes. <laughs> it's going to be first. I'm going to spend one for Skippy. Well, wait a um, minute. Why don't you why don't you roll first? Yeah, roll first. Yeah, roll your yeah. athletics or physique. Um, the difficulty is five. Alrighty, athletics. Oh, 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 oh no! Okay. That is a terrible roll. Ah! 
Yeah. Now, if you spent all four of your fate points, which if there are enough aspects for that, maybe that might work. Um, uh, so you it, could spend a fate point to re-roll and hope that... Um, well, wait a minute. That's a minus two without the skill. Yeah, so it's What's minus one. Okay. Because okay. one at athletics. Okay. Hmm... You can also choose to succeed at a major cost. <laughs> at a major cost. Oh, oh no, boy! I the success is knocking out this marshal, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if uh, um, on a fail, like nothing in particular happens, I think, except it, we're like, well, that didn't. Work, I guess. Yeah. I guess a human being would let go at some point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think that would be fun, though. Like, I think it. I think. If we were to do something, I mean, something, I will point out here. that if the dummy gets lost or like destroyed, it has the packet inside okay, I, of it. Okay, I, I hold that thought. I just get I have, absolutely I have a for later, but yeah. just yeah. We're, we are yeah. we are not no yeah. skip. Yeah. Skippy must reroute. continue. We need Skippy to keep Skippy. Must live. Skippy <laughs> must live. <laughs> okay. Um. um <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, put my, my darling, darling works for the post as one of the um. Just to see just if I can, can bump, bump it up, up a little bit. bit. I, also I also want to put, put one on. I want to use, use the. I want to spend, spend a fate point to invoke Skippy, so, so that's up four. Are you re-rolling uh, or? Oh, just. I'm sorry. Um, go through that again. Which aspects are you using? First, first I'm going darling to works for the post. First, I'm going to use my darling works for the post because Audrey told me about the cranes. So, um. So it's, so it's kind of iffy, iffy as to whether or not I should re-roll re or not. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think, think a re-roll? I, or... I think at a minus two, it's probably better to just take the, the flat. Yeah, yeah, flat roll. Okay, okay so, it's so it's back up to back one. one. Um, I'm, I'm also, also going, going to use Skippy um, as the, the, the situation aspect to bring it up to two. Um. I'm also gonna try using um I'm gonna try using friendly and familiar. Um because I have thrown Skippy into all sorts of bad situations <laughs> before and former smooth talking con artist because I know how to jury rig solutions. So I'm going to spend all four of my fate points to that role. Damn. Real quick, I want to say that I don't think friendly and familiar is valid. Um, former smooth talking con artist, that one it's stretching, but I'll, I'll give it to you because I, I I get it. But I think friendly and familiar is is insufficient. Fine, um, um, I can understand that. Um, do you, do you think we could do you think we could use past time I cashed out for? Um, can you invoke other people's aspects? Uh, Actually, that's a good, I, good point. I was, I was just about to say, and I apologize to everyone for the echo because I'm um, I'm charging my headset. It died on me. It just needs five minutes to charge and then it'll be done. Um, so you can use other people's aspects as well. So if you wanted to, you could use the aspect that's on um, that the Reverend may have. Maybe if the Reverend is helping, you can spend a fake point. Or the How Reverend about good could spend is a fake good point. enough? Oh, wait a that's minute. A There's also um, that hay fever and so like uh, you could spend a fate point on <clears throat> um the hay fever that peacock has that like it's really drawing the attention of the u.s marshal and he doesn't even get out of the way hitting him yeah all right that that's better. what i'll do yep okay before randy before you explain the outcome i would like to propose a compel for peacock okay so Jeez. so if i may uh this we just watch we just watch skippy go just like soaring through the air and and I, i'm kind of i'm watching i'm just like at this point i'm 90 percent checked out and the reverend says uh well i suppose a human could survive that kind of velocity if he let go and then a pause it's a good thing you grabbed that package and then uh and then John Harrington just looks at me. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I did. And that would that would be a compel for Peacock that that happened that mm -hmm. that, that happened. Oh man. 
So I mean, I would have to like try to snatch it. Is that what you're saying? Well, the the compel is that your package is airborne. Oh, okay. I think the compel is that the package is gone because Skippy is yeah. is yeah. not like. Oh, you know what? I tell you what. We'll make it even better. Skippy is hanging on the other side of that, the top of that train car, like just slowly being vibrated off the edge. Oh no! <laughs> Save Skippy. <laughs> And like, like and like you know he's he's like his his arms are flailed out such that this <laughs> package is poking out of his chest. So he's like it is hit the marshal now but I got to like so I mean I guess what's the compel for me like what's the what's the, what am I losing here so, by trying to grab it I guess Yeah. Like, so so um you know what actually yeah I, I like guess like the general imagery I just am trying to understand like the Sure. Uh, I was trying to think that um so we want the compel to complicate your life. So what that means is that the the package is inside of Skippy and you've got and it looks like you're going to lose Skippy. So basically you're going to. Oh, it's going to take the fate point yeah. to basically lose Skippy. Yeah. Yeah. You that's lose that true, package. Yeah. So you're not able to return that back to to Simon. Yeah. That's yeah like maybe maybe, Skippy, maybe yeah. Skippy's kind of like hanging off the edge and one yes. of those postal pylons goes by and, yes. and clips him Blast and he just turns into dust like he's just yes. an no! explosion of hay <laughs> How about well let's 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 so here's the thing one thing that i try to always do is make it complicated not make an ending Okay, so sure. what we can do here is like Skippy is on like the hanging off the other side of the train car and um, Peacock, you know that he's there hanging off the other side of the, the train car and it's going to be very difficult for you to get it. Um, mm. But it like it's not a priority for you right now. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. complicate things because you've got other things to do. If you yeah, decide to live. take time out for this, like it's probably going to go bad for you. Yeah, no, mm. I'll take that. I, I mean, I, I said yes to having the drugs to, so it could complicate things later anyway. So yeah, let's just let's, let's just uh, make it happen. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Thanks, yeah. Josh. Let's uh, yeah, good compel. I'm gonna turn on my headset and hopefully it has enough battery for. Two. All right, somebody say something for me, please. Hello. Hello. Skippy, Skippy must die. die. Skippy, Skippy must, must live. live. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. Let's get it like solved. There we go. We gotta we gotta leave an audience post. Does Skippy live or die? <laughs> <laughs> that depends on the exchange rate for Skippy's defeat points these days. Indeed, indeed. Oh yes. I have to say I've appreciated how how weird and fun this session has been compared to how deep and dark the previous. It's been a real whiplash. Yes. Yeah. 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 And and honestly, like that was that was in my plans for for this session. So that was good. Yeah. Um. So all right. Because uh, it can't always be dark. You know? Oh yeah, God, yeah. If it just yeah. keeps going darker and darker and darker, that's just depressing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I want you guys to be on a high before I before, you <laughs> before knock down again. The before the last session, yes. The last session where it's like, what is it? What did I name it? Like the truth. Yeah, uh, you did. The something about the truth. The sting of truth. The uh, sting yeah, of yeah, truth. Yeah. That was it. Oh, great titles. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna suck. All right. So, <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> So yes, so Skippy takes out this U.S. Marshal, goes flying off the train. Um, uh, Skippy is hanging off the other side of the train car. Um, uh, and uh, let's see. So yeah, so it's only like moments away from like the U.S. Marshals just, you know, going and being on full alert because Skippy hanging on the outside of that is just probably not, not, a, not a good oh, thing okay. for any of you who want to escape. Oh, um, so we have... Uh, um, we have Peacock hanging off the side of the cargo train, cargo car um, that is just one ahead of the criminal car. We have uh, Moira, who has climbed on top of the criminal car. Uh, we have the Reverend and Harrington, who are in the like one of the front postal cars. Um, we have in the train um, some other U.S. Marshals kind of like coming through the passenger cars on their way down because the um, conductor has notified that like someone was like basically climbing down towards the criminal car. Um, and this is the situation that all of you find yourselves in. Oh, boy. Yep, sure do. Yeah. So Moira, you and um, and Peacock. Peacock, I imagine you <clears throat> get on the roof of the criminal car very easily at this point. So the two of you can dialogue. Okay. okay. Yeah, she'll she'll just yell, Peacock, I thought y'all were here. 
Well, thank goodness you're here. What, what, I mean, well, not good for you, but I'm glad you're alive. What, what's, what's happening? What's going on? Uh, Charlotte. Me, uh, she's, she's back in the car. I, I just escaped. I don't know how long it's going to be until they figure out I, I left. Um, I, I really should get going to at least be with you before that happens. No, yeah, we shouldn't even get back on. Well, I mean, any idea how many marshals are on there? What can we do? Oh, hell, a, 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 a lot of them. I mean, it, well, I, I, at least probably five, maybe. I don't know. I heard a lot of footsteps. Is there any? Is there a window in Charlotte's car? Uh, w- was there a window? Yes. Yes. She'll say yes. Um, but she'll say like, I don't know what's going on. Something weird's going on. Um, I, I, I had to take out one of the marshals, and it was, it was. I had a hell of a time. They're wearing some kind of magic necklace. I, I don't. Hmm. And then th- they got this weird stuff on Charlotte. I, I hell if I know, but we need the we need the Reverend for this. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I guess we better reconvene. <laughs> um, That's what I'm saying. And she, oh, she'll, okay. um, this is very she'll... hard for Peacock because he kind of just wants to bust his feet through the window. <laughs> oh yeah. But but uh, if there's nothing he can do, there's nothing he can do. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, I she'll guess. She'll say like, how far? Where are the rest of them? How, where are the rest of, uh, of of you guys? Where's where... there, there are a few? There are a few cars at back. That, I came through the roof at that very moment. Um, you hear like loud whistles. Um, like, you know, like actual blowing through like police whistles um, mm-hmm. coming from the train car below you. Um, and you watch as a bunch of marshals kind of like run out um, and begin kind of like going through the cargo cars, oh, um, yeah. just kind of starting to like, you know, file out and check and see what's going on. Um, ran and out you of hear, the prisoner car? Uh, ran out of the prisoner car to the cargo car that you had recently been climbing on. Oh, um, right. And you hear Zenner's voice yell up uh, on top there. Um, uh, how's it going up there, Zeke? Oh, and I haven't heard, have I, no, I haven't heard this dude talk, have I? No. No, well, we heard him briefly exclaim something, I think, but that was it. It wasn't enough <laughs> yeah. to, like, base a voice on. Well, I suppose it's loud. It's loud on this train. Mm-hmm. I got a good deceive. <laughs> you, it's loud on this train? You got a good deceive? I mean, I gotta say got something. Got a good feeling about nothing, it. We got no choice. If we say nothing, <laughs> he's gonna this. look anyway. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Moira can't see anything because he knows her too well. So yeah, yeah, and if and if we don't say anything, he's gonna look anyway. So mm-hmm. try to well say anything. Uh, uh, well, everything's all fine up here. What are you all running for? All right, make a deceive. Uh, ah! I'm gonna set the I'm gonna set the difficulty for this at a two. Okay, okay, come on. Where is it? You got this. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, that is a success. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, that is a clear success. Um, so, yeah, um, Zenner says, uh, what is it? The uh, Mora got loose. If you see her, shoot on sight. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Uh, and he, uh, he goes back into the, uh, to the prisoner car. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, uh, well, I'm more of this is our chance. If they're all gone, we got we got to strike while the iron's hot here. Well, uh, and and she'll I don't know how close they are to each other, but she'll say, I mean, you you haven't seen what's happened what's happened to the madam. She's uh, she's tied down, I guess is a way to put it. We got to look for some solution. If they're all, I mean, when are we going to have another giant chance when when all these marshals except for that dude is gone? Ah, uh, that's 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 true. That's fair. And and the other two know that. You're headed this way, so they'll. they'll and maybe come. they can make some more complications to give us some more time. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but yeah, they're they're headed this way. I mean, yeah, I, uh, come on with me then. I guess we'll go back into the car. So, uh, so how do you, yeah? Well, how do you want to approach? All it? right, so here's how I'd like to do this. Um, unless somebody has like a different idea or plan, what I'd like to do is get us all into a conflict. Yes. Okay. And run okay. this like a conflict. We'll have two different um, areas going on. We will have the postal car um, where Audrey and um, Harrington and the Reverend will be facing down some U.S. Marshals uh, who are looking for Moira. Um, now, whether or not, like how you engage them is entirely up to you. It will probably turn violent, but doesn't necessarily have to. And then the other is going to be the criminal car where Charlotte is and all the things that are going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, does this sound okay to everyone? 
Sounds so fun. the the goal of the conflict is to get Miss Charlotte out and safe, right? Yes. That's the goal right. of the conflict. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, so great. Um, we're going to start with the um, with either the Reverend or Harrington, since we had just been with Moira and Peacock. Um, I need to add to the uh, to the board. Oh, new import? No, that's not. I want to add. Oh, okay. I guess. Sorry, I'm trying to add opponents mm. on here. Let's see. Uh, I don't want to. Sorry, I'm trying to copy what you know about Zenner to a thing I can make public. Hmm. So. All right. I made Zenner Jackson um, public. I made Madam Charlotte public. Um, and then I'm going to I need to make another one for uh, U.S. Marshals. And that will be public. All right. Can I add them to initiative? No. Can I sort? Um, yes, apparently. OK. So I'm looking at the Fari right now. Um, all of you players are up on the board. If you remember that the, the little person with the hand up means that you have not gone. Um, clicking on that turns it blue and it turns it into a little running person. That means that you have already taken your turn. Okay, we're doing initiative like we've done before, which is um, one person goes and then gets to choose who goes next. Um, uh, unfortunately, I can't add to that list um, the opponents, so you'll have to scroll down a little bit and look at the bad guys that are there. They have the same icon toggle, so hand up running person. Um, Zenner Jackson is the, the one-eyed U.S. Marshal. Um, then there's the U.S. Marshals, and then there is um, Madam Charlotte. Simon Pimer is not Pimer. Anyway, mm -hmm. Simon Pimer is not in this combat at all. He just happens. Actually, let me move him back to the private board, and then we don't have to worry about it. Madam Charlotte does not get a turn. Okay. Madam Charlotte's um, aspect here: charismatic magnet of supernatural trouble. Um, you may choose to use it. That's an active aspect in this scene. So you may choose to use it or I may choose to use it. All right. So that is how Madam Charlotte is being represented in the scene and attempting to help the lot of you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I know it's not mm -hmm. much help, but yes, it's, it's what there is. There. Um, and you know, the, um, Zenner Jackson's, you know, those two aspects and the U S marshals actually their their aspect is that they're U S marshals. So, mm -hmm. so there's that. Um, so like I said, either, um, Reverend or Harrington may go first and then we go with initiative from there. Hmm. I will say that the two of you in the car with, with Audrey, um, you hear, uh, the, you know, uh, basically that the, you hear the marshals coming along, like overturning packages and, and moving crates. They're not being quiet about what they're doing. They're checking each crate as they go through to make sure that, you know, um, to try and find Moira. Mm -hmm. So you, you know that they're coming. Hmm. Yeah, they will not get into your car until it's their turn. So the one thing that I want to do is I want to try and create some sort of distraction, like primarily because I just need, I, I haven't rolled my deceive all game and I yeah. definitely got to do that. So um, I have a, I have a really good provoke score that like normally I've been using to, uh, to indicate like ability to preach, but also I, I feel like the reverend's the kind of guy who could who knows how to get under someone's skin. And if there's some way that like between the two of us, we can talk Zenner into a bad situation. Oh no, Zenner stayed at the criminal car. Oh, he's with he's with Miss okay. Charlotte. Okay. Yeah, there might be a way where we can 
Because I've got I've got some I've got a couple fate points to burn. There might be a way that we can just like talk through this. Because my my biggest like my biggest hang up right now is that uh, the Reverend like I can't just kill U.S. Marshals because they're in the way. Like that's not really a thing that. He oh can do. oh that's oh I. Amelia brought up a good point, and not only that, I actually have I actually have another oh, idea to, to well, piggyback on top of that, and you can make it a compel. Yeah. Oh, damn it! I was already going to compel that with something, <laughs> okay. whatever you're going to say. Look, just out of character. Hey, is if these uh if these U.S. marshals turn out to be demons, then then You'd that would cool make the, it, yeah. that would make the thematic narrative much more straightforward. So the devil returns, and he's got the mask. You think uh, I, I I will tell you that that I've got or a good that... idea for two compels that mm. will feed into that. Um, okay. If you'd like, if you'd like to set one up yourself, you are welcome to. We can talk through it. I don't want to steal that thunder. Yeah, I, I I'm ready um, to hear what you guys have. So, so I'm thinking I'm question. thinking we could Zener. I could like the the devil can say I can get you out of this. I um we can disguise you as Zener Jackson. Since he's back, since he's back there, and throw them off. So if if I don't see that, if that's not something I see, if I just see you like almost miraculously put on a costume way too quickly, like that that works. Uh, but I I would have to not be aware of what's happening. I, I was thinking somewhere along the line of like somehow the devil in the silver, like influences or takes over these u.s marshals hmm. I, I don't know i mean because yeah just for me i like because at this point like the reverend's the reverend's almost ready to just go back to the passenger car and sit down hmm. uh so okay so i tell you what since we want since since it seems like we want an inciting incident here yeah we kind um, of that's need what an inciting incident, yeah that's basically. that's what it sounds like to me um so i'm going to go ahead and offer harrington i'm going to offer you a compel on my darling works for the post. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is, this is my compel. So I am going to, whenever the U S marshals kind of like come in, one of the U S marshals is actually like not expecting there to be people like in here. Like they've, they've gotten themselves like so wound up that whenever the first one comes through the door, like Audrey kind of like in her very bubbly personality is like, hello. Uh, and she immediately gets shot in the stomach. Ooh, oh no. Shit. Okay. <laughs> she, like she goes like down to the ground. Um, and as oh, you're kind fuck. of like, uh, as you're down there kind of like looking down, you see like you see off to the side, there's like a, a mirror that the package, the bottom of the package got ripped like a silver oh, mirror man. and you kind of like you look up and you see a, a familiar uh demonic face <laughs> okay. Um, okay and the and you hear uh hear a voice say i can handle this oh no <sighs> damn oh, you monster All right. Okay, so which one of us is going first? <laughs> All right, which one? Yeah. Uh, well, no, no, but, yeah. Oh, well, man. Here's, here's the thing. This is this is going to definitely be bad. Um, so the compel is letting the demon handle this. Do you let the demon handle uh, this? Oh, okay. Oh, I do. Farrington? Like, because I've I've burned fate points. I'm out. Let's. All right. I will. Mm -hmm. I will give you that fate point. Okay. Um. And why don't we let the Reverend go first, and then mm. that will give you, Dylan, a moment to think about how the um, how the demon might might do this. So this is mm. there's two different ways that we can handle it when it comes back to your turn, which I'm hoping that the Reverend will pass it to you next. Mm. Um, you can either determine like how the demon does it, and we use your skills to resolve it, or if you want to, like I can say that, but I wanted to give you like control over that. Mm -hmm. so um because let you be evil for a little bit and why should the gm have all the fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so reverend go ahead and go first okay well um as soon as that happens uh my guns just like twitch of their own accord and jump into my hands um this is cool this is the first time the 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 blessed six guns have really gotten to like play yes. a part uh and the Reverend just turns down, turns around, and there's hellfire and brimstone in his eyes, and he says, Now y'all really shouldn't have done that. And he opens fire. 
All right. Uh, I am the going to lost focus. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I, know, I was going to say maybe you're an easy rider like magazine now. Yeah, know? maybe. Mm -hmm. um, some of the some of the seventies. Um, well, I had a compel for him. He's back. Well, he's got to have his headset on or he can't hear me. Oh, I know. Okay, the lighting right. is worse now, but it, it fixed the focus. Oh, uh, it's fine. It's not too bad. We can still see your face. Yeah. Um, all right. So I have a compel for you. So the um, so thoughts and prayers, uh, they are blessed to send Hellspawn back to where they belong. Mm -hmm. um, as uh, as you begin firing thoughts and prayers at the U.S. Marshals, um, the uh, the amulets that they're wearing kind of flare to they're light. They're wearing amulets. I had no idea. And That's what I said. Dude. <laughs> oh man. And they like the amulets flare to life. Um, and you watch as like the the bullets um, get consumed by this this silvery light. Oh um, no! Uh, the um, so I would like the Reverend to make a lore roll for me, please. Okay. Cause yeah, um, cause like yeah, I, I yeah. I'm definitely I'm definitely I'm I'm a. I'm dubious of, of this particular turn. Yeah, events. I'm going to I'm going to say I'd like you. The difficulty is going to be a two for this. Uh huh. So go ahead and give that a roll, and you got oh. a two. So that is success at a minor cost. Um, for the overcome roll, I'm going to skip the minor cost. Um, I don't want to slow things down right now. And so um, so you recognize that they are um being blessed. Um, the amulets that they wear, like after the light kind of fades down, um, you recognize it as angelic power. Oh, mm. oh, I hate that. And, <laughs> uh, and thoughts and prayers are not going to do anything to these U.S. Marshals wearing these amulets. Is that a compel that I can pay my way out of? Um, uh, yes, yes, you could choose to, to pay your way out of if you wanted to. Okay. Um, because all compels you can pay your way out of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't like that because my <laughs> guns right wrongs and this girl's gonna die. My guns are pissed. Uh the angelic, yeah. Uh my guns may not see the nuance in this situation, but I do. <laughs> uh yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna and, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay to get out of it. I'm gonna pay out of it. And and I'm fine with that, but I do want to point yeah. out that I did say that it was an accidental like friendly fire shot sort of situation because mm -hmm. she was bubbly. They didn't come in guns blazing. She was big and bubbly <sighs> and it shocked them. I just say that so yeah. we can get the story detail right. You are absolutely within your right and I encourage you to spend the fate point. Yeah, I'm gonna spend it. I'm, okay, go ahead and spend I'm, I'm the fate point. Um, that is definitely not the case. Um, so you, uh, oh goodness, your plus two roll, you made a lore roll. It doesn't show me history. Oh. I didn't um, roll. I didn't roll shoot yet. I actually oh, haven't rolled that yet. Okay. Well, then let's go ahead and roll shoot then. Yeah. I, my rolls are not good today. That's uh, the second. That's second minus two in a row. Oh my! Oh, you got a. Yeah. My okay. So a total of one. Let me go ahead and roll mine. I get a plus three. That takes me to a two. So they uh, successfully defend. Okay. The amulets do help against yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, bullets. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I like I like right. that. That makes sense. That works. Okay, for me. good question. Great. And yes. Even though even though he like resisted the compel, is kind of what you said still narratively true? Uh, that it is angelic power. Yes. Yeah. That is still true. Yeah. It just doesn't counter thoughts and right. prayers. Okay. In this yeah, I, I would imagine the two are kind of like opposing but canceling out a little bit because like. Well, uh, it's one of those things that like you know. Um, power is power and just because like yeah. for instance like the fact that in dungeons and dragons everything that spits fire um is immune to fire and it's like that's yeah. not always true like i yeah. you know like i don't know like i could wield a flamethrower but i'm not immune to fire yeah <laughs> so um yeah so yeah so um so yeah there's uh the u.s marshals are perfectly fine um who would you like to have go next reverend oh absolutely it it's gonna be john harrington all right, John, how are you going to talk your way out of this? <laughs> <laughs> how am I going to? All right, so the devil... The devil's proposed for me a solution. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
would it make sense to involve like like the package the the shimmering mask falls out of the package and i put it on and there's and just i'm imagining these men just getting torn to shreds like yeah. there's no universe it be, where it's yeah, not a bloodbath it, yeah, well i mean at least a couple of them can be torn to shreds right. yeah yeah oh yeah. yeah not yeah yeah the ones that are present yeah yeah, 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 just the ones in this little box car for sure. Yeah. yeah, and and that's what I'm thinking. It's like, yeah, I I put on the shimmering mask and like, yeah, and that happens. All right, and the nice thing is when you put on the shimmering mask, um, you feel as though you've like put on the face of evil, and it looks just like your face. Oh, wow, that's good. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh wow. <sighs> all right rough. so so, what so who's gonna to who's i mean i i need a description someone's got a someone's got a gm this for me i need I, a good description can, of how it looks it, but dylan do you do you want to do it yeah so the, so the, the, the scene set like i've just unleashed like a hail of bullets and uh their amulets have protected them maybe a so, couple like Nixon so yeah nothing happens. so so basically like the way that i envision it is like you know I kind of start hearing the devil's voice as, you know, like this sort of dark, sort of inky black fluid leaks out from the package itself. And I and I reach in with my fingers trembling and I pull out the shivering mask and it's got like, you know, and you can tell like it's been put back together. And even though like it's been burned, actually, that's a great motif. What happens is, is that when I put it on, like John Harrington bursts into flames. Like mm. everything is on fire. And what happens is it's like the the sheer amount of, of fire and and you know, like you can see his skin sort of turn to cinder or something like that. Like that's how I kind of envision it. Like and it and and just the embers flow forth from from him and yeah, it completely vaporizes those marshals. Oh God! Now we just went from we just went from Skippy being launched <laughs> from comedy of errors, comedy too. of errors to <laughs> we're we're back to the bad place. Yeah. I know. Holy <laughs> shit! Wait, but... this is the bad place? No, um, no, it gets yeah. worse. I'm sure, but okay. you know, honestly, um, in my in my in book, the, in, I don't in the dark, see spooky zone. I see this as like harsh but justified because like in my in my mental fan canon Damn. narrative they just kicked the door open she was like saying hi they just shot her in the stomach and like tossed her body aside like well, in, that is in my I'm mind asking. these aren't good guys yeah i so, mean that's that's a fair assessment it's still horrifying oh it's absolutely yeah, the worst like, yeah yeah and, and, and the Both reverend you are just, covered in blood yeah, yeah and the reverend's sure. first thought is like have you learned nothing Maybe I haven't. I thought I did. And then, then like, John just, he reverts back to normal and he falls over, collapsed, and he's completely... At this point, I'd, I'd say he's unconscious. Like, I'll, that took I'll, everything out of him. If that's the case, then the Reverend will, like, pick, a, like, kind of drag well, him wait, behind let's, him. Let's, yeah, let's, sure, let's sure. hold for a moment. Um, so, Dylan, who goes after um, that awesome scene from Harrington? I'm gonna say remember, Moira. Like the bad guys are options too. Remember that. And actually, do we want Moira to go next, or do we want the bad guys to go next? Because that think would the bad guys. Yeah, let's have them go Moira. next. Yeah. All right. So, which ones do you want, Zenner to go next, or do you want the U.S. Marshals to go next? Zenner. Let's put the... things. Zenner's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zenner. I mean, Zeno doesn't even, yeah, doesn't even know we're there at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. So Zenner's going to go ahead and go. What is Zenner going to do? You guys have no idea. You know where he is, but you don't know what he is doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, let me consult my list of cool shit. Um, oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. I know what he did. Okay, so um, there is nothing for anyone to notice as a result of his actions. 
um, but he did not leave the train car as far as you know. All right, so. Um, that just makes you more concerned, but, <laughs> but well, we'll see. I mean, yeah, you know. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead yeah. with the, the US Marshals next. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say that the, the marshals that were following up behind the ones that were like incinerated, um, are going to actually, um, uh, they're going to shut and bar the door to the, um, uh, shut and bar the door so that they can kind of figure out what the hell is going on. Um, they are going to create advantage. Um, uh, they're going to try and create bar door. Uh, as an advantage. Um, the difficulty for this, I'm going to set at a two um, because it's, you know, it's not super easy to bar these doors because they slide in and out like pocket doors. Um, those are common, commonly the doors on trains are pocket doors. So um, that is not what I want. That's what I want. Um, they rolled a zero. They have a plus two skill. Uh, so that is just going to be a boost for them. Um, so I'm going to put a boost for the marshals, um, there, and that is out in ferry. Um, so they were not successful in creating the aspect barred doors, uh, but they did get a boost as a, a result of their efforts. Uh, they are going to pick to go next. Um, let's see who has not gone next. That is going to be, um, I'm going to say Peacock. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, his approach would be like, if he sees just, if he thinks it's just one guy on there, I mean, I think want to kind of as quietly as possible, but move, move down to the entrance to that door. Um, oh, wait a second. Cause he went back in, right? He did. Would we, would we have, okay. Maybe this isn't too much, but would we have known if like, would we have heard if he like locked the door? Uh, no, given the wind, um, okay. where you are, probably not. Like that was part of what helped you pretend to be the other person. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that sound. makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, no, I'm thinking, so Amelia, what do you think as far as, it's going to be better to try to like sneak in through the door or like bust in through a window? I think at this point they're they're aware they're either aware of us or soon to become aware of us. I think busting through the window. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna try to do. I will see whatever the closest one is and try to like, uh, yeah, try to I don't know, kick my way in through the window. I guess. Do you want to try and kick in through the window where Madame Charlotte is? Yes. Okay, um, you will get a a plus one to this. I think this is like athletics because you're kind of trying to come around and okay. bust the window. Um, you'll get a plus one from Moira kind of pointing out like where it is, um, making it more likely for you to find, find that window. Um, okay. so I'm setting the difficulty for this at a, um, I'm going to say a three. Okay. There goes nothing. Oh, Damn. Nice. nice. All right. So you got a four right. against a three difficulty. So that is a success. I'm not spending any of my fate points um, sitting on them like a dragon does gold. <laughs> so you managed to, um, to, to smash into the window where Madame Charlotte is. Um, as you kind of come smashing in through the window, uh, you see that Madame Charlotte is kind of uh, sitting there. She has a very um, sad slash mad kind of look on her face. Um, and you see kind of um, standing in the doorway um, with an open lockbox, you see um, the, the one-eyed U.S. Marshal, Zenner, um, mm -hmm. going through the contents of the, of the lockbox. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I see anything? Um, you don't see anything inside the, the lockbox immediately, but he says, just the person I'd like to talk to. Um, and then... Who goes after you? The only person remaining, yeah. Moira. When, when I pop in, mm -hmm. I'll just kind of like, you know, because Peacock's always trying to look smooth, even in rough situations. So I think when he busts through in, he just kind of turns to Charlotte and is like, hey, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping his cool head. Even though he sees the craziness going on. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, usually she gives you a wink or a smile, but she just is completely stone face as she, she looks at you. Right. If anything, she looks more sad to see you. Oh, no. Moira? Yes. So she's going to um, swing in through the window after 
uh, after Peacock, and she's going to attempt to attack uh, Zenard. Uh, how she gets in there? Attack? How am I going to attack? Uh, yeah. I am going to shoot. All right, you want to swing in and shoot. Uh, I'm Can going I make to a suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, you sh- like maybe instead of just as a straight attack, maybe you could uh, attempt to create an advantage and shoot him in the other eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's a called shot. I'll take I'll take that one too. Thanks. <laughs> just a thought. <laughs> Keep the yes. change. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll do that for sure. Um. So, are you really going to try and shoot his other eye out? Um, you know, or... she does kind of want to talk to him, but at the same time, she's like, he's just going to kill me. She's conflicted, and I'm, I am as well. Um, hmm. So, I guess the question is, are you trying to, like, shoot to kill, or are you trying to, like, shoot to improve the situation? Shoot to improve the situation, yes. Okay, so that sounds like a great advantage. Yes. Um, okay. So what you want to try and like shoot at him to put him like um, off balance? Yeah, either off balance or like, so he drops the chest <clears throat> or, you know, he, you know, wound him in the shoulder so or something. I, I, I have an idea for how shooting him Ow. in the other eye could be a create advantage role. Maybe it's a thing where like she shoots him and it hits his eye and he's permanently blinded, but then like the necklace activates somehow and like his eyes glow red or something. I don't know. Uh, I, it, as soon as you said I had an idea, an idea clicked into my head and, and what you said was good and very similar. You guys all oh have to gosh. get out of my brain. I just want to say that. <laughs> all right. It's weird. That's what you get for playing with three GNs, man. It's yeah. weird. <laughs> all right. So, um, so Moira. Yes. Um, Yes, you can create an advantage um, uh, shot in the other eye. Um, it's going to be opposed by him, so it's going to be an opposed roll. Uh, you can make a shoot roll, and I'm going to, I need to look up his skills to see how he will defend. Okay, yeah, I'll wait um, to make that roll. Um, right. Yeah, no, but I, I figure even if she doesn't hit him in the head, the fact that she's aiming for his eye, his other eye will absolutely infuriate him and put him off what he's yeah. doing all right so. um i've got his i know his skill that he's using he's going to use athletics to try and get out of the way i'm going to roll now and that roll is a zero plus three is a three result so mm. go ahead and make your roll moira please be good ah damn one. all right that is a two point difference on you trying to create that aspect yeah so what would you like to do this is not an overcome, so you can't succeed at a cost. I know. So um, it's either... Hmm. I want to see what happens. So um, so I'm actually going to say that uh, an aspect um, gets created. So when you go to create an aspect, if you fail, there are two things that can happen. Okay, there are two options that can happen. One, it doesn't get made. Okay, and that's commonly the one that gets used the most. It's the easiest. The second is that uh, an aspect gets made that's as a result of that action, and um, it's like geared a little bit more towards the other side um, having that. So I'm going to create uh, an aspect, and I'm going to to put this on the board. Where's the thing I just made? Um, Uh, doesn't need oh, his eye. Oh, yep. Like this. This is good. Yep, I oh. love this. Yes, so Moira, yeah. you uh, shoot Zenner square in in that eye, his his only good remaining eye. <laughs> my only um, eye! Mm-hmm. Yes. That um, was my and, last eye! Yes. Um, <laughs> and, but he doesn't uh, seem to give a shit. Well, he cool. doesn't, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't say anything. You just watch as like um, just kind of like white holy light comes just out of the the eye socket wound, both the front and the back um, mm. where you shot him. Um, and and uh, he does not look does not look perturbed very much by that. Um, all right. So Can Laura, I say, you were oh, go him, ahead. Do I do I sell the cane? Um that's up to you. Yeah. I, I mean, assume you have it. Yeah. So I was going to say like between since it's, you know, it's powered by the devil and we know it's like powered by, by bloodshed and all that. And there's been a lot of 
death here, I'd say, and especially in response to that particular thing and that it's holy, I'd say that it's just narratively speaking that it's probably glowing again at this point. Uh, it is not. Not? Um, okay. No. Now, if you were so in the if you were in the train car with the incinerated U.S. Marshals, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. yeah. But um, that makes the, sense. Because he's like, not. Yeah. yeah. What happened to Zenner is not bloodshed. That's okay. more like. Oh, yeah. That's more like you know, uh, cracking and uh, no. That's more like peeling away uh, a shell mm. Okay. Um, mm. to reveal something else. Cool. So. Yeah, um, Moira so, will just kind of like put her gun down slightly and be like what in the fuck and then she'll she'll grab for her uh for ammo for next time all right great now Moira, you get to decide who goes first in the second round and you can this is something that i discovered and was clarified that you can choose yourself um oh. in these oh, instances nice. so um, i'm not encouraging that but i'm saying that that is an option um i'm actually gonna choose uh Zenner I like that. I'm glad you said yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's right. see how he reacts to this, like, fully. Uh, yeah, let me... Hold on. I want to... This public and private board stuff. I'm bouncing. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, uh, so, Peacock, um, Zenner is still addressing you. Um, and he says, uh, Herbert, um, I do believe that there is there are many things that you don't know. And you hear Madam Charlotte say, no, no, don't do it. It was a different time. Um, and Zenner says, uh, Herbert, I believe that you are defending someone who you should not be defending. I am a U.S. Marshal. I am the law. I am here to, to do good and right by the world. Um, and I think that you need to rethink who your friends and your allies are. And he kind of looks pointedly at Moira, um, at least as much as a, a head with no eyes can. Um, and uh, do, 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 do. Um, he passes you uh, a sheet of paper, um, actually several sheets of paper. Um, and as you read, uh, you read the details of a, um, a Deacon Bar Barber Atticus and a, um, oh goodness, I wrote down something else. That is not the one I need. Sorry, I'm trying to find my notes, which are all mm -hmm. over the place. Um, and apparently I didn't write that one down. Anyway, um, and uh, Deacon's wife, uh, basically uh, Madam Charlotte's uh, married name, which would be uh, Mrs. Barber, um, you read of like, you read snippets of contracts, um, deals with, uh, the devil mammon. Uh, so you will remember mammon from our very first session. Uh, mm -hmm. mammon is the devil of greed. Um, and he was like, that devil was totally blinged out when you encountered him. It's trying to steal gold from a train. And mm -hmm. uh, basically, um, you see lots of, of deals that are signed in blood by Deacon and by Madam Charlotte. Um, and, you know, uh, the, uh, as you do this, um, uh, Zenner, like this is being modeled as an attack. Um, Zenner has a stunt that allows him to attack with investigate. Oh, um, that's so cool. So, oh my gosh, I love um, that. So yeah, so he is attacking with his investigate skill. Um, and he has a stunt that if he spends a fate point, which I am going to do, you have to absorb it with consequences. You can't absorb it with stress tracks. All right. So um, he is going, you can resist with will or something else. But basically, this is laying out that Madam Charlotte and her ex husband were striking deals with tons of devils and, and making sacrifices um, all up and down like the, the East Coast. Um, I'm going to roll my die. And I get a minus three. That brings me to a total of two. Oh, wait a minute. Minus three plus five. That's a total of two. Um, let me know when you roll. What did you get, Peacock? Oh, me? I'm sorry. I thought it, I was confused. Yeah, you have, you have to defend. Okay. No, you have to defend. Um, I, got a, I got a result um, of two. All right, here. I'm rolling will. Okay. Uh, here goes nothing. 
Oh, whew. nice. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I am going to spend a uh, fate point, oh. an additional fate point oh. on one of uh, Zenner's aspects. Just, uh, I, just narratively, yeah. I just want kind of want to say in response to in response to him to just say, yeah. uh, this this woman saved my life and 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 made me who I am. So you're going to have to work a little harder than that. Yeah, uh, I'm spending it on hard nosed U.S. Marshal. Like he knows how to break a person. Uh, yeah, and sure. so this is this is exactly what he does. So that brings uh, my result up to a four, which is one above your three. So, well, I mean, uh, I think you know Peacock sees the, sees her kind of as like as what he says. So I mean, I think he's going to just push all in as he can. So I think he's just going to uh, invoke, um, you know, uh, Madam Charlotte's flesh confident bouncer and uh, and add another one. All right, sounds good to me. Uh, I'm not going to ante up anymore, so that is a successful defend. Um, and you are you are not like I mean you can feel however you want about all of this, but um, mm -hmm. uh, but that attack was not successful. Um, he is going to pass it to. Let's see. Let us pass it to. Hmm. Oh, I don't want to pass it to Moira. I want of course to he doesn't want to. Yeah. No, uh, I'm going to pass it to the Reverend. Um, so after after uh, John Harrington passed out, which I'm assuming isn't like permanent. No, uh, no, um, no. He'll, yeah. He can be he can be conscious for his next turn. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have an idea for this, but yeah, go ahead. Um, I am going to in in the vein of evangelion rebuild 3.0 epilogue i'm just going to start dragging him across the floor of the boxcar just like he's just like leaving a trail of ash in the ground as i drag him mm -hmm. um, towards our objective and yeah i'm just gonna move so what happens what, what do i see um uh, well uh you get to the door and the door is you know the door is shut um and uh it is it's locked from the other side the um, remember the marshals are trying to prevent they you from getting it, yeah. to, to them uh, because they're like, what the hell is going on? Um, like, uh, I really want to just drag him into the next scene. Oh, don't worry. It like trust me f with, a, with what, what I about shooting that yeah. that lock off. I mean, it it seems like it's not locked from my side. If there's a, like, not, a padlock no. on my side, that'd be one thing. Is there That's is there it. like conceivably a way I could do that? Because yeah, it, it just it would just be badass. Like I I yeah. just at this point. CJ's just done. Like I, mm. he's just so over all of this. I really want him to just like shoot locks in between here and there as like part of a move, like just to get from zone to zone, and then sure. just get into the scene and be like, "Guys, we got, we're done here. Let's get out." So yeah, go ahead and make a, probably, make a shoot. Okay. Um, um, the difficulty is going to be a two. Cool. And this is like, is this for like all the locks or no? This is for this lock yeah. in this situation okay. right now. Plus one. All right, um, one short. It isn't overcome, so you could succeed at a minor cost. Yeah, I'm going to succeed at a cost for sure, for sure. For All sure. right, so succeed at a minor cost. Um, oh goodness. Uh, I'm going to say. I mean, I'm not cost, exactly being subtle, so. I'm going to say the minor cost is you have to reload your guns. Okay. I do so, love the there, image of you yeah. just like dragging him with one hand and blasting locks with the other. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what uh, I was going for. So, yeah. Reverend, I'd like to offer you a compel. Um, I want to give you a compel on John Harrington's My Darling Works for the Post. Um, I'm going to offer you a fate point. Um, John Harrington is going to despise you because you did not save Audrey's life. She is going to die as a result of you, like, dragging him off and trying to continue on. Is, is Audrey kind of. I guess I guess my question is is like is it creating her to kind of kill her? I'm wondering like do we want to like I don't know, I'm just uh, narratively uh, I kind of just like her being shot dead. Well, what if okay, so let me let me rephrase that. That's an excellent point, Dylan. Thank you for pushing back. Yeah. So, why don't we say that um Harrington is going to despise the Reverend for leaving Audrey behind and not taking care of her. Yeah, um, like oh, okay. the marshals sure, who are coming sure, from the front sure, of the sure. train will, like, one of them will give her first aid and keep her alive, but the Reverend did not, and mm. that's going to put a huge, like, 
problem between the two yeah. of you. Yeah, that's yeah, Which that's makes sense, because, like, uh, I mean, you know, like, the Reverend wasn't sent on a mission by the angel Gabriel to help people that are bleeding. You know, he was sent uh, now, to right wrongs. Now, this also, uh, admittedly, this also, Dylan, requires your buy-in as well, because this is yeah. impacting your character. So, yeah, I'm going to, like... In fact, I think it's I think it's perfect because admittedly, like I said, I just didn't want to kill off Audrey because I'm just thinking of that narrative trope where like the female oh, character God, dies yeah. and yeah. to motivate the male character. Let's keep yeah. her alive. Let's make sure that she has further. Yeah, I just wanted to make That's... sure we avoided that. Thank you. No, um, and like yeah. I said, I appreciate and and this went against the advice I said earlier, which is like instead of an ending it's a complication. Yeah. So I, sometimes I forget. It my complicates their relationship too, because she's going to be like, yeah. holy, like he's Why'd you turn to fire? actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're, yeah. you're not this person. I remember. Yeah. 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 I like the idea of like the last thing her seeing yeah, before she loses up. consciousness is, is Harrington bursting into flames mm -hmm. and like yeah. not knowing what happened after, but you know, of course the U S Marshals are going to yeah. say, yeah, it was the devil himself. And this is a great argument for uh, Harrington and Reverend to have, I like that a lot. That's very yeah, good. yeah. Um, and it's something that can happen. It doesn't have to happen now, unless you want yeah. it to. But it can, you know, we can bring that along in the future. All right. So, um, so uh, Reverend, you managed to shoot the lock. Um, you um, successfully. Sorry, was that a that. compel or a minor? That cost? was that was a compel. The minor okay. cost was you have to to reload your gun. Sure. Before using them again, um, yeah. you shoot the you shoot it off. And um, you open up the door and the U.S. Marshals um, have like stacked a bunch of boxes and they're behind the boxes and they're like, we are U.S. Marshals. Um, surrender now. Um, put your hands in the air and drop your weapons. I believe uh, and you gentlemen have underestimated the scope of this particular series of events. And I'm going to pass to Dylan. All right, so what I'm envisioning is by this point, like, the the devil has completely integrated himself into John Harrington. And John f flies, kind of floats up, levitates, and the way that his body is moving is as, as if he's like a puppet on strings being controlled. And at this point, like, I would describe him as unstable, unstoppable in terms of, like, and just you know, fire is everywhere. And he just goes straight back to, to, um, to the other marshals. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, that sounds great to me. Mm. Um, so, so John, go ahead. And um, uh, it sounds like, I mean, you're trying to kind of like shoot them with fire. Does that sound right? Yeah. Um, All right. And I will say that in this case, because, like, because in this case he's unstable and, like, in, if there's any cost involved, it's taking out the car. Like, damaging the car itself, that would be kind of the, the cost to it. Let's see here. He's got um, one fate point, so I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I tell you what, I mean, I can absolutely give you a fate point for the devil and every silvered surface... Um, I will say that like, we'll resolve your, your shoot roll, um, to, we'll resolve your shoot roll first and, um, then I will compel and make it big. So go ahead and, um, make a shoot. So I'm going to be rolling minus one and I'm going to actually no point in spending a fate point. I spent one by accident, but there's no point in, you know, cause we can compel it. But I gave you the, gave you the one back. Um, All right. I, I rolled a minus one with their um, plus two that takes it to a one. Um, is minus one your total result for shoot? No, you have a plus one. No, I have a plus one. So, so that, it's zero. That took it to zero. Zero against one. Do you want to spend a fate point? Yeah, or... let's do it. And I will, and I will invoke devil in every silver surface where right. just, yeah. All right, that will bring it up to three. All right, uh, I am going to um, I'm going to compel you, John, uh, and you can't say no, so I'm going to give you the fake point. Um, basically, like as you like rain fire on these U.S. marshals, um, you incinerate uh, the remaining marshals, um, and the fire just envelops and splits the train car in half. Mm -hmm. um, 
you and the Reverend managed to get on the half with the, the criminal car. Um, and, but it's immediately starting to slow down as it's like dragging along um, because you have split the train car. Um, at that point, everyone who's in like that section of the train immediately jerks forward. Um, uh, and so I, this is a great opportunity with, so jerks forward because of the slowed momentum of the train. This is a good place to give out some compels. Um, so John Harrington, I just gave you a compel. You're flying. I'm not going to do anything there. Um, Peacock, you, uh, I'm going to, um, Oh, uh, what's a good compel for you to fly forward? Um, I'm, you know what? Let's go to Moira. Moira, a compel for you for being jerked forward is mm -hmm. I'm going to say that um, you're going to um, spill your magic ammo. Oh, shit, um, yeah. And as a result, like it's no longer like uh, you, you'll have to collect it up. Uh, in order to kind of use it. So mm -hmm. the compel is that like your magic ammo is, is scattered all over the place, making it a bigger problem. Are you good with that compel? Um, or do you want to pay to say no? I am going to pay to say no. All right. Pay to say no. Um, John Harrington, Reverend Haggard. Um, uh, so Reverend Haggard, uh, I'm going to offer you a... I have an idea for a compel, but... Oh, yeah. Can... Go right ahead. No, no, no. So, You're okay. First. So, what I'm kind of thinking is like the Reverend is watching the person that Dylan, uh, not sorry. I, it's it's so hard that I'm seeing everyone's real names up in Zoom, but it's like not their character names yeah. on the side for me. Yeah. Uh, he sees the person John Harrington's becoming, and these U.S. Marshals were wicked men. So, my guns have not yet demanded his life. But John doesn't know that. And also the Reverend knows that one day his guns will. Basically the compel is like me realizing that one day I'm probably gonna have to kill John Harrington. Oof. Oh my God, this uh, is actually, such a great setup for the next why session. Don't, here's the thing, yeah. uh, the compel should be that you now know that you have to kill John Harrington. Yeah, it's not maybe. You know you have to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I want it to be yeah. like a one day Holy thing. Stuff. Like I know that like oh, it no. won't be today. Yeah, but you definitely have to kill mm -hmm. John Harrington. Yeah. Um, and that will be next session. And um, and I'll know. <laughs> when my, oh my god! Oh my I love this. <laughs> oh man. And yeah. I will know when my guns tell me. By the way, like they oh. they haven't they haven't like you know jumped and said something sense. yet. But like yeah, it's gonna happen. Sounds good. Um, so. Right now, um, I'd like to pause for a moment. I think this is a good spot for a bio break uh, to take like five <laughs> minutes. Oh, no, I'm not going to kill all my friends, just the ones that turn into several of devils. them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it's yeah. not hard. Just don't turn into Satan. All right. So let's let's take five minutes. Let's be back here at um, yeah. say like nine fifty six, nine fifty seven, yeah. thereabouts. Um, and then we'll wrap up. We're going to run long, probably by about a half an hour or less. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. 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 I just okay. needed, I, cause yeah. I, I knew okay. that. So I was like, let's take a break. Okay. And then just, yeah. yeah. All right. Then let's do it. We'll take, we'll take five.
All right, we are back, and we are back for the uh, final run at uh, at this game. All right, where did we leave off? We left off with a bunch of we left off with the um, with John Harrington incinerating yet more U.S. marshals, um, and then with Hellfire dividing in half. Um, one of the cargo cars, um, slicing it from the train, causing everyone to kind of jolt forward. And in that moment, we were in the process of offering compels and Moira bought off her compel. So nothing bad happened to her. And uh, the Reverend realized that he is going to need to kill John Harrington um, while um, John Harrington does not yet know, but will soon uh, realize that the Reverend did not tend to, to Audrey's wounds mm-hmm. um and we'll put a uh put a spike in their relationship but we do still have peacock and peacock i would like to um make a give offer you a compel okay. all right so the compel is whenever that train jolts and everybody kind of like does that um you uh your peacock cane just kind of like you've got it in hand because you you mentioned that you had it just kind of like shunks down straight through Madame Charlotte's abdomen. Oof. Oh no. Uh, yes, you are basically convinced that this is like going to kill her, but this is how you kind of discover that she is uh, not exactly human. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it wouldn't kill her. No, no. Okay. Yeah, I think technically wanted... she's already, technically she's right. already dead. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously he doesn't like that, but I like him discovering that. Yeah. So yes, I'll take that. Yeah. This is, this is a complication. So, um, yeah. cause I'm assuming that this is going to like, uh, what you think of the situation might be complicated. So, yeah. yeah. Cause also <laughs> Moira didn't, didn't mention this part of it cause she didn't know no. how, what the hell to say. She just said right. she seems to be trapped there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. all right. So, um, so John Harrington, Dylan, it was your turn last. You get to choose who goes next. Um, uh, valid choices are Moira Peacock. Um, and then let me look at the public board, um, the U.S. Marshals. Uh, and, you know, the U.S. Marshals, I'm actually going to take them off the board because I think you've incinerated enough U.S. Marshals. Yeah. Um, the ones that were Other coming up from the, this yeah, the ones that were coming up from the front of the train, um, they've been effectively taken care of sure. um, by the separation of the train. So I've removed them. So that means that you just have to choose between Peacock and Moira to go next. So I'm thinking now that Peacock's cane has witnessed me incinerating. Peacock's cane has no, not. Have, has yeah. not? No, I because Peacock's cane is in a different car. Um, so there are two cars. There's the criminal car, and then there's the cargo car. The cargo car that you split in half is right here, and this is where um, you are, Harrington, and this is where the Reverend is. Mm-hmm. Um, the other car uh, contains Moira and Zenner and Peacock and M- 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 Char- Char- Madame Charlotte. So, um, so yeah, the Peacock, Kane, and Harrington have not intertwined yet this session. All right, so, um, in that case, it could go either way. I was thinking we could involve Peacock's cane, but yeah, I also think it's dramatically appropriate for Moira to react to the to everything being set on fire. Moira, the train car is on fire. I know, behind <laughs> behind us, and and this guy. Well, she has a lot to react to. First of all, this guy who's like her mortal enemy. She's freaking shot through his head, and he's still like totally cool with everything. And she can see through the the door behind him. The other train car is on fire, and what? she's just like, "What the fuck is going on?" Uh, she will take the opportunity to spend another fate point and uh, search for. Uh, a bullet to break the uh, angelic link to the thing that uh, Zenner's wearing. Oh, okay. Yep. So basically like a banishment bullet of sorts. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so that is, let's see, your magic ammo. All right. You have the right ammo for the job. That is not an action in and of itself. You've spent your fake point and you have that available to you. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So she... Um, I guess, you know, in it, with the jolt in the train, like some of the like, like, 
yellow like gold ones kind of jolt up in the bag. She goes, oh yeah, 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 that's the right one. So she she loads it in and she takes aim at his uh, necklace. So um, now taking aim, uh, you can either do shoot to try and like destroy the amulet. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that would be an overcome roll. You could try to take aim, which is literally you concentrating to get a good shot, which means creating advantage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, or you can shoot to try and kill him, which doesn't sound like what you're doing at all. The other no, two... because it doesn't sound like it'll actually work. <laughs> right. So she. Well, you do uh... have a banishment bullet, but there is that. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, she'll shoot to kill him. She's um she's oh. impulsive, uh. So she'll she just wants to get a. She's not really thinking either of. She just wants to shoot him and for him to be gone. So. Yeah, she's going to shoot him to banish him, or attempt to. All right, uh, let me take a look at what he is going to defend with. Um, you know what? He is going to uh, defend this with will. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and roll for him. His will is plus four. I rolled a zero. That's a four result. All right, go ahead and take your roll. <laughs> um, my one good roll this time yeah yeah that is um is a one stress hit um let's see you know that so so here's the question that we have to put to ourselves right now so mm -hmm. it's it's a special magical round for banishment um and uh You've done one point of stress. So to him, yeah. To him, yeah. Now, depending on like how much time we have for the game, like you know, we can do a bunch of different kind of like resolves for this. Um, given the situation that we find ourselves in right now, I'm inclined to. I I am going to spend a a fate point. Uh, on doesn't need his eyes to represent the whatever angelic energy he has. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I spent yours, not mine. Um, so that brings his result up to a six. Okay. So the question is, do you want to spend another fate point? Oof. Um, um, I will... I. I will tell you mm. that um, that uh, if you succeed, this will banish him. Okay. Um, cause the thing is I want to, uh, narratively, I almost want to like banish him, but just like for like five minutes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like while we all leave and get out of here, but then he comes back and he's pissed. That's... like, he's, he's back on the train tracks, just like real mad, you know? Cause I don't want to, oh, yeah. cause that's what we kind of zap the devil last time. And I, mm -hmm. I don't want, I don't want to completely zap him. I just oh, want him to. Not I'm, be I'm completely on board with, yes. if you spend the fate point to make this a, a success, like, will play out the rest of this scene as a scene and not a conflict because you you've succeeded like in getting uh -huh. madame charlotte and getting like over like all of your opposition um because there's some meat in the scene left um oh, and then is, yeah. after that i've like, got three Zander's big points left back. yeah <laughs> right um so yeah so i'm gonna spend it yeah and then that's what's yeah all right what what aspect are you using um I, I almost want to say I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah. But I don't know how to put it. Something to do with how she had that vision earlier. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to connect it. Hmm. Well, anyone I think can help that, me connect it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the thing is, is this is, this is what you saw in your vision. Mm -hmm. Zenner is what you saw in this vision. And you are banishing Ophium, uh, oh. the, the angel. Nice, yes. Um, I like so, that. Yes. So you have you have literally banished an angel from Earth, at least for a short while. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's how it ties into that vision from earlier. No, I really um, like that. Yes. Um, or maybe like she like like the bullet hits him and for a moment he turns into his true form and then is just like mm -hmm. just like imploded out of existence yeah he like well the thing is there's a flash and you get like an after image of like the wagon wheel of eyes with the little fetus in the middle and the magic oh, sigils yeah. yeah um mm -hmm. and like uh 
Yeah. So when and when this happens, it like knocks everybody out. Um, and the the first to the first to waken is going to be Peacock um, and Madam Charlotte. All right. Um, the train is continuing to to dramatically slow down. It's almost stopped. Um, but the two of you are the only ones conscious right now. Um, and there's no sign of Zenner like at yeah. all. So oh, just so I can uh, bring it into the into the conversation with her, when that my cane hit her and I realized something was was up, what did I see really? Uh, you saw it go into her. You did not see any blood come out. It's basically like oh. as if you were to like punch a hole in a zombie. Okay. All right. Well, I so, guess I, I'd be, I would turn to her. I think I would turn to her and be like, um, um, I've seen a lot of weird shit around here lately, but not with you. What's what's going on, boss? What just happened? Uh, well, uh, I tell you what, Peacock, um, you go and um, I, I believe in one of these cars, they probably have some bourbon. Why don't we pour ourselves some drinks and have ourselves a conversation? All right. I, uh, uh, oh no, I was going to say the marshal because he's he zapped into out of existence. But I, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll, yeah, I'll go walk around. I imagine the marshals might have a place where they have something to drink. Oh, and yeah. I'll go do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easy to find some whiskey, yeah. uh, whiskey or bourbon. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, basically, like, um, you each have a drink and kind of sit down while everybody else. Yeah. I imagine I check... probably toss one back and then immediately pour myself another one. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yes. Well, Peacock, I, I imagine that you've got some questions as to some of the things that you've seen here today. Um, and I want to tell you that story. Yeah, what's going on with you first? Well, first of all, um, what I am is is complicated. And personally, I'd like to, to kind of keep that private. Um, but as far as everything that's been going, uh, or the things that you've been uh, privy to, those papers that that, that man mm -hmm. uh, gave you, they're all true. Uh, I did not lead the best of lives. I made some very bad decisions for power and wealth, uh, struck some deals with Mammon, and it was not good. I did that with my husband, uh, my ex-husband. And um, unfortunately, there came, a, um, uh, there came a night when I couldn't do it anymore. Mammon demanded sacrifices, demanded specific sacrifices, specific people be sacrificed. You see, my ex-husband... Uh, Deacon Atticus Barber, um, he wanted power, political power. Um, he's a, a state senator in Maryland. Uh, he's got eyes on, on becoming a senator for the state of Maryland. Um, uh, and so like he's, he's, he's on a path to power. Um, one night we uh, got the call to, to sacrifice three people. We got three names. We you know, we, we went to do what we were supposed to do for Mammon, for our power and for our wealth. And it turns out uh, one of the names on the list was an infant. Mm. I couldn't do that, Peacock. Well, no, um, I should think not. No, definitely not. Um, my ex-husband thought differently. Um, and we had a, a big disagreement. Um, uh, we had a big fight. Uh, and I used all of the all of everything that I had at my disposal to flee the scene, to, to take the baby and to go, uh, to take the infant and make sure that it was safe. I was not able to save the infant's parents, Peacock. Mm. Uh, and I, I adopted that child and raised it. Mm -hmm. And that baby's so. name mm -hmm. Albert she Einstein. I'm just she, she takes, <laughs> she takes a, she takes a big old drink of whiskey. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> and she just kind of stops there. Yeah. Oh, well, I think Peacock's going to be staring off in space for a minute or two. He's connected uh, the dots, I assume. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. 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 But he's, that's done. You know. I mean, like, I mean, he knows yeah. a lot of weird stuff, but this is a a lot to take in. Mm hmm Um. Oh, okay. Give me just a second. I think, you know, I think he just turns to her and, and uh, as, as shocked as he is and um, and says, uh, thank you. I don't even know what else to say, but thank you. And I don't care what you did before because everything you've done since since I've been around has, has been for my benefit and, and, and the good of the town we're in and, and, 
and you clearly changed yourself. So whatever happened before is what happened before, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I don't really care about it all. She raises a glass for like, you know, for you guys to clink glasses. And cheers. Yeah. I think he's just like, yeah, I mean, he's like a mix of thankful, stunned, uh, overwhelmed, and, uh, and uh, wants to uh, murder her ex husband. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we're going to end the session. Holy right. shit. Okay. Wow. Oh, wow that so, was great. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Clinking glasses on a disconnected train car and a half. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh. With yes. everybody else like just unconscious around. Yeah. Um, so I felt like that was that was a good moment, and it also encapsulated the story that we wanted to tell, which was to to explore Peacock's past a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for making mm-hmm. that happen. This oh is yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. This is really cool. So let's end our sessions like we usually do um, with kind of like roses and thorns or wishes and stars, however you'd like to put it. Um, you know, something that you liked or didn't like about tonight's session. Um, whenever you're ready, feel free to go. Um, I love the difficulty. Yeah. I think that like for, for this play group, it was really good. And I love that all of us kind of felt a strain on our resources and had to make some really tough choices. And I was taking compels I wouldn't normally have necessarily taken. Um, yeah, I just, I loved the tension. Even even when it wasn't like emotionally intense, I loved that it was hard. I thought that was handled really well. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I like that. Also, I just wanted to say like, thanks to Dylan. Like, I, I love what we're doing here and and letting this inter-character party conflict brew really slowly and gradually. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're like, we're both on the same page about what we want to see happen as players, but we're letting our characters conflict come to an eventual head, which will be a really climactic moment. Yeah. And I'm definitely interested in seeing how it goes. Oh, me too. Yeah. It's gonna be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's something that you can't, um, uh, what well, I don't want to say can't, but it's something that you shouldn't do when like it's a one shot. You haven't played with people for very long. Yeah. It's something that has to like you have to build up a personal rapport, kind of like uh, you know, mm-hmm. add some dollars to that emotional checkbook so that you can yeah. write a check um, mm-hmm. to to do something difficult like that. So um, yeah, I think that this was the right time and the right place for that to happen, and it happened organically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you have to know each other as people as well as, like, know each other's characters really well to do that. Because, yeah. like, you know, even when you're role-playing, you're like, oh, no, are they saying that in character? Or are they them saying that out of character? And you have to learn that, like, bal- that, you know, um, you know how, how everything flows. And you're like, oh, no, you know, that's, you know, they're in character. Yeah, so you got you yeah. got to know everybody really well to do that. Mm-hmm. And we're we're getting we're we've gotten there I think and it's really interesting to see where everything's mm-hmm. going. Yeah, I'm amazed. Yeah. yeah, the only thing I'd say I didn't I didn't like was just a couple of my own choices. I'd say like I wish I had just a couple times where I had kind of I resisted compels or I put in a kind of some fate points into like avoiding a problem where I look at now sort of pretty quickly afterwards I was like oh man I wish I'd done that differently. Like I wish I would like uh, just seen the trouble of falling off the train and and then like. And like seeing what the, what consequence you would have handed me for the you know the investigate attack with the investigate thing and just how to uh, deal with that also so yeah so that's, I, just, I that's just a learning curve for me uh, as far as playing you know and yeah I, and I, well also yeah. he's not gone and I fully expect him to come back so he's gonna I mean he's very 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 pissed at all of us and especially yeah. Moira and he's gonna yeah. turn T one T two thousand back after us like yeah it's gonna be terrifying I I love it. <laughs> Yeah. And I, and I love, I'm just like, thank you so much for like just like, incorporating that whole uh, element of the story with him and Charlotte. Like that was really, you know, cool. I, just, I was taken aback. I mean, I, I saw where you're going there it, it, just when you started, but like, then I was like, oh man, but then I was like, oh man, what? I don't even know how to respond yeah. to this as the, as the yeah. character or the person. So cool. I literally, I just had to take a second and I was like, oh man, I wish I had something a little bit more elegant to say, but I feel like <laughs> you know, this is a, you know, uh, well, the character really would be cool. taken back too. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. it was very, it was right. You know, it was a right response. Mm-hmm. So thanks, Bailey. Yeah. 
You're welcome. I think for me, like my only big thing was, and, and here's the thing, like there are a lot of things that would have normally bothered me if it were any other session with any other group, like sure. how I didn't really get to, you know, use deceive at all. Um, but I'm not particularly bothered by it because I got to do a lot of different things. So, you know, it's I guess it's, half. Like, yeah, yeah. So, you have to go like supernova and do cool DBZ yeah. shit. Like, yeah, that was yeah. like, Great. so I, I think that it's a testament to kind of the adaptability and just also the chemistry of the group where it's like, even if I can't play in the way that I normally would, I have these valid and interesting options to play from. So yeah. I thought it went really yeah. well. I think that really speaks to the quality of it as a system. Cause like a lot of RPG systems, your character kind of feels like a loaded gun. And if you don't get to shoot your character the way they're made to shoot, you feel yeah. like really disappointed. Like I didn't get to do my thing that I do. That's the cool thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, I didn't, that. I didn't roll lore all session. There was like no opportunity yeah. for me. I mean, I might've once, once, but it was, yeah. yeah but like, once, yeah. That, it, that could yeah, have been that else, was, you know? Yeah. And it, it was just like, it's all, it's so cool that everything that's happening is in service of the narrative. And mm-hmm. that creates a really unique story. Cause like, you know, halfway through this session, it was this dumb slapstick comedy. And I was like, this is so yeah. stupid. And my yeah. character is not here for it, but I'm having a great time. So I'm going to roll with it. And then it came full circle back to something really intense yeah. and cool. It was, it was just so great. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that, that, so Dylan, what you brought up is a, a very valid point. Um, whenever it comes to like not being able to use like peak skills or things that are like your character's kind of ballywick. Okay. And, you know, sometimes that's that to me, like whenever I play fate is where create advantage is great territory. That's cool. So that's something that like that, that we didn't do in this session a whole lot of, we didn't do a whole lot of creating advantage. It was mostly overcomes and like some attacks. Uh, We didn't create advantage. And that is a place where if you're like, if whatever you're trying to solve doesn't jive with, like deceive like the route that you guys took to get on the train and get where you were going was not a deceive route mm-hmm. you could have gone a deceive route but that yeah. just you know honestly peacock was leading the charge on this and that's okay and yeah. that's great yeah. but um think in terms of trying to create an advantage using some of those peak skills and you can bring those to bear so like for instance whenever it comes to um like the the reverend like using lore you know, you can try and stretch it a little bit to start informing the narrative and be like, okay, so U.S. Marshals were managed managed to take Madame Charlotte. Wouldn't they have to like get past some kind of magical defense that yeah, she might have? That's a good point. And then yeah. like we could be uh, like, oh, well, that's that's yeah. a really interesting idea. So let's <clears throat> you know let's create advantage to like you know maybe come up with something that and, and might, like maybe- might be helpful. Maybe even creating an advantage by establishing a narrative detail. That's something that never uh, occurred to me mm-hmm. that actually would have been yeah. right here. We that's actually a- did though. That was we did Skippy. That was yeah. mm-hmm. and that was kind of the that's why I don't really <laughs> mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like even though I didn't directly get to use Deceive, and I wanted to just bring that up for the sake of mm-hmm. like, you know, mentioning it for transparency, but I'm I'm not bothered because, you know, even though I didn't get to do like I wanted to do something with skippy later on where i would create an advantage using him but um i'm also happy with the outcome so it's not something that's particularly bothersome i yeah, just wanted well, to bring I mean, that up that's what i was say like i mean if they didn't do that one thing the thing you brought into it mm-hmm. like played such a both comical yeah. and purposeful role in what happened yeah. like I, I, i'm thinking of like i mean some in some of the like you know other uh, you know you know live plays and stuff i've listened to sometimes like these things that kind of just get thrown in as, as jokes or bits or I think, the, and they end up being these like, you know, things that have major impacts or beloved NPCs yeah. or, or whatever it might be, you know, and like, it's, you never know when that might happen. And that was awesome because, you know, if you just thrown him on the tracks and that would have been the end of him, like, but because you were just carried him into the damn train. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. So you so, bought him yeah. a ticket. <laughs> that was my favorite part where he's like you're gonna get a ticket for that thing he's like yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So yes, I am. So I carry them all this way. <laughs> yeah. So so Dylan, just to to acknowledge what you've said, uh, to to make sure that I'm hearing you, um, you're not upset that you got didn't get to play Deceive. You just brought it up to point out that that didn't get to happen in this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So and I just, something else happened right. instead, and that was good. Yeah. Okay. I just I fine. wanted to yeah. make sure that I was I was hearing you correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So and and it brought up a great talking point of like using create advantage whenever like with whatever primary skill you have when it's mm -hmm. not solving the problem is is very much like a good way to work in some of those skills that maybe otherwise wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so, I, I had kind of a similar experience where I, I thought the the story was like setting up and building up to me interacting with uh, with Charlotte and like. I was really looking for like maybe compelling myself with my guns being like she's she's living this on life and that's kind of a crime against God maybe like those are all interesting ideas that I was looking forward to exploring and the narrative ended up panning out a different way that was more focused on Peacock and like I think so I was kind of banking fate points planning for that in interaction and I think in a different system that would bother me more but because of how flexible what we're doing is, I still got to have a moment that was really satisfying and cool for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like, I imagine I, I don't feel next deprived time... or bothered by that at all. Yeah. Well, yeah. Me, me yeah, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. And I imagine next time he'll probably have some interaction with her because, yeah. like, yeah, she's like got some problems related to her magic and the sounds of things. Yeah. <laughs> she wants some help. And like, there's these really uh, cool themes you're bringing up of like bad people abusing holy power. That is like, that's really going to resonate with the Reverend. Yeah, He's going to be like on fire being about affected that. by demons. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So and I was thinking, like, in terms of like not using our apex skills and stuff, I was thinking like every time I was thought I was about to get to use fight, I got like knocked to the side <laughs> of the train, or or like he got or that guy got banished. And it was like, or just I got yeah, yeah, yeah. I went up the top of the train and got stuck there. You ready to throw a punch? In. The dude just like, disappears. Just, <laughs> so, yeah. so I do want to point out one thing, okay? And um, and I, I did this explicitly, and I want to make sure that it gets picked up on. So I'm saying it, like, because mm -hmm. um, sometimes whenever you're a GM and you do something that's super subtle and it's so subtle no one notices it, um, and then you're angry, purpose, yeah. <laughs> then you're like, then you're angry, like my players don't pay attention. It's like, uh -huh. no, you just didn't make it specific enough. Um, I want to point out that Zenner, the U.S. Marshal, and the other U.S. Marshals never did anything evil. No, no, I know they that. Never, that's that just more. That's never, later. They, no, they no, they never did anything evil. They shot Aubrey or Audrey by accident. Um, they gave you verbal warnings. Uh, Zenner, um, while being a prick. Uh, and definitely taking out some some of his rage on Moira. Like I'm not saying he's a good person. No. But I'm saying no. I'm saying that he didn't do anything evil because Moira is somebody who took his eye. Mm -hmm. And he and views it as retribution. Yeah. So like, so I just want to point out no. that them having like like Zenner being like tied into like angelic power somehow, and them having amulets of angelic power, completely on board mm -hmm. with like from from their perspective oh yeah being fine oh yeah i told i i put uh something in chat of saying like they're they could be totally horrible but if it's within the their law of their code of honor and their vision of justice what they're doing is righteous you know what i mean like it might also, not be to our characters because they're yeah. the ones being affected I mean, but, but, but you're like I said, but besides like, you know, punching you in the rib, they really didn't now, you know, no, that didn't exactly. click in my head till later that like that was the case. It's like, oh yeah, he's, you know, Randy kept setting these things up. It's like, oh, it was an accidental shot. Oh, oh no, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I, oh, yeah, I totally this guy's an asshole, but like personal on a personal level and, uh, you know, but yeah, that, that clicked yeah. in my head later and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I guess maybe I, I've been thinking about it because I'm playing a paladin now in my game. Baby. We see you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We see, we see you. But yeah, like, okay, um, good. but yeah, it's, it's, and Moira too, some of her, her things that they're after her for are not, she didn't do them. So she, that's her whole thing of like, well, yeah, it's unjust. So like he's been, uh, there, there's some levels of injustice here. So therefore the whole thing is unjust, which is not a correct assumption, obviously. But, <laughs> but that's what she Well, I mean, we've got, a, we've got a Jean Valjean situation, you know, what else is Moira going to do? Like she's hungry. She needs to steal yeah. the bread. Exactly. 
I, I think I'm kind of a, a unique spot with all of it because like I'm playing a character for whom these moral quandaries are like very immediate and direct and mm -hmm. like you know, he has to do the right thing and that it's very much like dictated in terms in those terms. And like, I, I don't know, maybe we should talk more in between sessions to try to oh, figure definitely. things out, but. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think especially you and me, we need to Before, talk about. Yeah, yeah. and like, I have Before ideas session, and I also have opinions. I have so much. <laughs> we'll figure oh, it out. Yeah. yeah, before next session, considering it's our final one, we have a lot. Yeah. To, yeah, we have a and lot yes, to talk about. Uh, I, good. I think, yeah, all right. So I think right now we're gonna, we're gonna stop streaming. I wanna thank everyone for watching. I hope that everyone had a good thank time. Um, yeah. It was amazing. Um, if all four of you could just stay on the line after we get off streaming. Uh, oh, yeah. All sure. right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day.